Welcome to Zero Page Homebrew, your best source for the newest Atari games. And tonight we do have another brand new Atari game, which is a world premiere. Yay. And uh, kind of a special <clears throat> night we'll be playing a trilogy of I games. I love it. I'm so excited. I love that like, we got a nice Themes? theme going. Yes. Welcome Brazilians. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There'll be a Brazilian people watching yeah. tonight. Um we have the trilogy of Zark stars. Nice. One, two, and three. That's so exciting. From Leandro Camera. Okay. Um, and Zark stars two, Ground Force being an exclusive world premiere tonight. Okay. Um, so we've been playing oh. Zark stars one, a space saga. Zark stars two, Ground Force, and mm -hmm. Zark stars three, Deep Space. In that order. Mm -hmm. You're pointing at the cat. Nope. Kitten cam is dark. It oh. is on your TV, on your computer right now. Oh, there is a cat cam. Yes. And something exciting we're going to do with the kitty, too. Yes. Kind of exciting. For kind him, of. For him. <laughs> Let's get that cat cam going. There we go. Is there a cat in the cat cam? No, he ran away. Yeah. Of course. <laughs> of course he ran away. Yeah. Oh, come over here. You were in the cat cam like a second ago. Oh, there's a, there's kitty. a kitty in the cat cam. Yeah, there you go. So for treat time tonight, yes. uh, you get to choose... Whether you give him treats, little crunchies, yeah, or if he gets uh, some catnip, yeah, um, but there's only one catnip a night. We're gonna uh, yeah. <laughs> actually change it around so you can give him a catnip as a bonus once during once. the show. Next yeah. time, next time I'll set that yeah. up. Um, I want to thank all the Twitch subscribers who are scrolling down beside <laughs> Tanya, Eight Bit Swami, on the Firearms Guard Coder, Atari Age, Big Dog Susie. Oh. <laughs> We have it already. Yeah. And Dr. Moo Cow's uh, on the menu tonight. Oh, catnip. Catnip, let's He's go. Like, let's do yeah. Catnip, let's go. <laughs> Who wants catnip? Do you want catnip? Who wants some catnip? Do you want some catnip? Do you want some catnip? Want some catnip? Can you see him? There yeah. he is. Oh, he's so excited. You want some catnip? Not too much. Not too much. He actually already had some today. But he really? He's always in the mood for some catnip. catnip oh, right what a mess. It's, I have to vacuum anyway. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Did you see him? See, yeah, he rolls in it first. <laughs> Getting him started early. <clears throat> that was very cute. Oh, kitty. So cute. Yeah, he's and now we, covered in catnip. You can watch him roll over. What happened to the... Oh, oh there he is. Okay, we're good. Um, you can watch him roll around in the small little uh, yeah. camera there. Uh, BR Pocock, Buck Owens, uh, Chance, Don Mayo, Don Mayo, Charles Whelan, Chive 5, Dianoid, Dan C. Direct, Drexel, Daryl, Emu Dan, Fox Mulder, Great Defender, Ground Trooper, Oja, Rapper, Johnny WC, Carl G. Croco, Lauren TDZ, Marco Johannes, Mark Space, Inc., Metal Atari, Mike Small, Mike Soul, Mike Littell, Miss Command, MK Smith, Mr. Fix, Neo Media, Oren Deco, Pack Rat, VG Hog, R. Anschwitz, RC70, Rundered, Ghost, Repentless, VG, Ricardo, Pim, Six Sweet, Smitty B, Socrates, Spice Ras, Ramirez, Toy Pig, The D Train, The Welsh, Mantiga Dan K, TM Events, X Ken X, <clears throat> and some people also subbed before the show. Dr. Moo Cows, I think. Dr. Yeah, Moo Cows, yeah, yeah. who also is getting the cat mm. high right now, <laughs> <clears throat> and Ricardo Pim. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you. The list gets longer, it uh -huh. does. Keeps going. It's uh, steadily in the 50 range now, yeah. 50 people. It's getting up there. Yeah, this cat yeah. is killing me, by the way. He's so funny. He's cute. Yeah. So if you want to get on the list, um, just subscribe to the show. Yeah. It's tw it's free with Amazon Prime. Or you can just follow us if you don't want to subscribe. Yeah. And That's you'll get good. alerted to shows like this. Yes. <clears throat> What's up? Just ate. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Our food came about five minutes before That's the show started. That's why we're a little started. delayed yeah. tonight. Yeah. <laughs> it wasn't me this time. No, you are here fairly <laughs> I was early, here on actually. Time. Um, so news tonight, uh, Hokey Update News. Hokey? That is the sound chip mm -hmm. for the 7800. The Pokey replacement. Pokey replacement. Yeah. It's also a replacement for Atari 8-bit computer mm -hmm. systems, mm -hmm. but we're specifically concentrating on the 7800. Uh, so, oh, that is the wrong monitor. It, it does this every time because I turn off that monitor, so it gets freaked out. Yay! There we go. Um, so, uh, Batari, uh, Fred Quimby updated <clears throat> on Sunday. Hokey is just about ready for release. Mm. The only thing I'm still working on is the firmware update mechanism so the latest sound drivers can be used on your Hokey. Don't worry about availability. 
as all the parts for Hokey are already there, so there should be no worries about the chip shortage. Mm -hmm. I wasn't expecting Hokey to take this long. It's been about three or four years, oh, I think, really? or even longer, yeah. actually. Um, mm -hmm. But it's a little delayed for a few reasons. Among those, because I'm working on an upgrade module for the current concerto owners, mm -hmm. which is very exciting. Originally, I only thought production concertos could be upgraded. However, I figured out a way to fully support production and pre-production concertos produced since 2020. Nice, nice. Now, he was selling for a decent discount the pre-production ones. So the people who grabbed those got very lucky because they're under the assumption that they weren't going to be able to get upgraded. Mm. So they got a good deal. Uh, this and, and even more exciting, wait for it, the upgrade is expected to support the games and demos that the stock concerto can't support, such as EXO and Ricky and Vicky. So now 7800 Game Drive and Concerto will now both be able to support Ricky and Vicky, awesome. which is amazing. That's amazing for all the people with a Concerto who want to play. Ricky. Yes, and who haven't got a copy of Ricky Vicky yep. and Vicky because they can just download yep. it from Steam, extract the binary, mm -hmm. and we'll be talking a little bit more about that in the next news item. Okay. Uh, it also should also support the new mappers that are being created right now. The upgrade module should be around $20, so that's the module to upgrade old um, carts, mm. not the Hokey itself, which I believe is 10 or 20 Said It depends on scale of economics there, mm. not sure. Uh, I would uh, sell for user installation, but I would recommend letting me install it. Plan is to have this ready before PRGE this year, mm. so... Wait, when is PRGE? Uh, mm, <laughs> okay. <laughs> they haven't announced it, but it could be anywhere from August to November. Okay. They, that's kind of the range they've operated in. Yeah. But who knows? Um, so I can upgrade concertos there, which will save us some trouble having to ship them back and forth. And usually he he's at, at the PRG booth and he's always fiddling with some cart. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he's always installing something on a cart or upgrading a uh, 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 Harmony Encore. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so he'll be busy doing that again. Um, also, new homebrew board is being developed in tandem that leverages the power of the module so that most games that Concerto supports will also work with low-cost homebrew boards. So that's very good news for the 7800 developers. There'll be a no, new homebrew board that'll support all the great new games if PRG happens. I'm almost 100% sure it will happen now. Well, they want it to happen, they I'm want sure. It to happen, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Do not worry about the chip shortage for anything I do. In this era where parts are hard to find, I don't design hardware first and then hope the parts will be available when it's ready for production. I already bought the suitable parts. They are here, ready to go. It's just that's excellent. all about waiting for me to finish the design. Nice. So that's great news. That is good. Uh, so the next news is also to do with 7800. Uh, Saint posted, remember he's the guy who's doing developing the 7800 game drive cart. The mm. third new uh, multi-cart for mm -hmm. the 7800. Um, and he's answering a question uh, from Ground Trooper, a friend of the show. Uh, how is this working, actually, in terms of Ricky and Vicky and the 7800 game drive? I understand it supports the game, but has the ROM been released? Or will it be for sale? I own it already, so it's not the only appeal to me. Uh, I think the files are required to run it. And the 7800 game drive uh, will be added as part of the Humble Bundle or Steam or whatever. It requires the audio in a different format to use, so those are extra files. But the ROM itself is actually in the PC release if you look for it. Mm. And then the developer of Rick and Vicky also added some more information. Yeah, there seems to be a very poor, really poor awareness that the game's binary is included with the Windows release. So if you get it from Steam or Humble Bundle, you will get the actual rom the binary that runs on the 7800 oh i see originally it only ran on the uh his emulator that tail chow made okay. for that the bup system emulator mm -hmm. and also his proprietary hardware that he made okay. just for his game okay he made his own sound chip and mm -hmm. is very very uh it's the only thing that it was made for um but now uh, Bup system can run it, and also now two upcoming um, cartridges will be able to run mm -hmm. it too. Uh, good night, Chile, mm -hmm. <laughs> Rod Castler. Uh, hey, Rod Castler. <laughs> um, da -da -da -da. That's how be it. people have been running it on the Mister, so you yeah. can also run it on Mist. 
Uh, the audio format changes just rendering all the buff chip scripted music tracks as PCM streams. So those will be included with a software update on both Steam and Humble Bundle. That means if you've already bought the digital version of the game, you own a copy that can be used with the 70 under GD. Nice. It also means that more easily, uh, others can more easily use our weird custom hardware to develop games. So nice. win-win for everyone. Yep. And then Saint followed it up with, I will release the tools required to convert the BUP chip audio into the streamed format required by the 7800. Also, so any future BUP system games will also be able to play on the 7800 GD. Mm. So it's all coming together mm. very nicely. Um, so that's great for the future of emulation and playing uh, BUP system games on the 7800. Mm -hmm. Um, so the 2022 Harmony games have been announced. These are, uh, games, um, that Dan ABC runs, um, uh, that are based on the Atari Homebrew Awards, the winners of the Atari Homebrew Awards. So he does a high score challenge nice. based on those games. Nice. So he's announced the games, uh, round one, which is happening as of yesterday. Oh, cool. Uh, Ooh, Tober's Nightmare. Tober's Nightmare nice. and Turbo Arcade. Nice. So we're going to have to do an After Dark. Yes. Featuring those two games yeah, and yeah, yeah. put in our high scores. Hey. Yeah. Thank hey, you Rod for Kassler. subscribing, Rod Castler. I don't know if that means good night or... I think good evening is good what evening. he means. Yes. Because yes. somebody yes. else said it earlier as well. Yeah. Um, Close enough. Yeah. Close enough. <laughs> it all works. Thank you for yeah. subscribing, Rod Castler, and enjoying the show. Uh, Tober's Nightmare and Turbo Arcade, two very fun games. So we'll be playing that soon. So round two after that, Game of the Bear, super fun. We need to put some more time into that. And Ladybug Arcade, I don't mind playing that again. Mm. Uh, K. Joe Chases a Cheese, very fun. That's round three. And uh, Dodge It as well. Mm -hmm. uh, that was the, oh, oh, I can't remember that one. It's running around a single screen game. I'll have to take a look at it again. Um, best ridge and round four is Mr. Yo-Yo. I'm not going to do well at that. <laughs> That's a hard game for it me. It is a hard game. And Robot War, which mm -hmm. we're, you know, getting better at. So that'll be a, an, another like fun Robot one to War. do. I know I'm not going to win that. I'm sure someone will just destroy a Robot War. <laughs> yeah. But that is a fun, fun game. I have to play Turbo Arcade on Stella to be fair to everyone. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, that's true. Um, because I have the full version of turbos mm. and and you know they have the demo version so yes. I, I have to play it yeah i think that's fair too yeah playing it on the same oh, do i have to play it on stella or can i play the demo version on, the... on my oh i'd have to load it i'll just play it on stella it's totally fine whatever whatever is is yeah. is fair yes yeah yeah i'll play it on yeah. stella we're not trying to get ahead of other people no it's just i'm whatever's yeah. convenient for me yeah true true uh the games in bold are links to each game so yes. you can click on those and nice. you can see the rules, what Excellent. settings you have to. Excellent. Um, let's see. So for Tober's Nightmare, uh, Expert, you have to play on and play till you die. And uh, you get 10 points for first and one point for 10th place, etc. Mm. Uh, so let's go back and take a look at the rules for Turbo Arcade. Uh, la, 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 using emulator. Uh, Harmon, yeah. This game can only be played using Stella as a game, cannot be played using Harmony cards or other Flash cards. I think I'm probably one of the only people who has one of the new cards that um, Batari, Fred mm -hmm. Quimby, is working on. I think that's the new card he's talking about because I have one that can I, I can Flash Turbo onto. Um, but obviously I can't do that for this. Um, so you have to play on level difficulty uh, A. a for manual shifting oh god really <laughs> oh no not automatic <laughs> shifting he's making it hard this year yeah and right display cars passed okay uh, be on right that's normal okay uh for the score to count you need to pass at least five okay uh, or the max of 30 in the first round mm. okay uh and the same oh nine points for first place oh interesting Okay, so you can check out that and uh, start playing uh, those games and get some scores. Here is the link for that. Um, do I have, is that everything? Oh, no, one more thing. Um, remember we played Draconian for high scores? Yeah. 
guess what? I came in fourth place. Ooh, hoo, 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 yes. Hoo, nice. Not Very bad. Nice. I didn't expect, I, I don't even expect a place in the 10, in the, the 2600, top 10 and the 2600. Well, it, I would assume Draconian, Bosconian, that game itself is pretty yeah. popular and People yes. Know. I mean, Stephen Jones obviously knows how to play that game well. Yeah, he did very uh, good there. <laughs> and Patrick Gravel, too. They're both in that Way four up. to five hundred thousand. I think if range. I played it a couple more nights, I probably would have been got a, a much better score. Yeah. 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 Because it's a fun game. It I, is I a did fun okay, game. but I think I could have done better. Yeah. Um, but I just didn't have time. I had lots of things going on. That's always that's always the issue. It's I know. Fighting for time. <laughs> fighting for time. So. That is all of the news. Uh, now we're on to the games. So tonight we're going to be playing the three games. Mm -hmm. Plus we have a written interview from Leandro Camera. Oh, nice. Okay. Um, because... Will we go over it as we're playing back Yeah, we'll kind forth? of go through the answers to, okay. to the interview. Nice. And you could read it and I can read it, okay. whatever you want. That sounds good. Um, and we also have another interview from him that we'll be reading out. That he has translated into English from a magazine, a Brazilian magazine. Oh, nice. Yeah, okay. So we'll get some additional information very as well. Very cool. That's very cool. So uh, if you don't know what Zark Stars is, it is a trilogy of games mm -hmm. um, by Leandro Camera that started with a work-in-progress version of Part 3 that was named Deep Space at first without Zark Stars being attached to it. We played okay. it a while ago, a couple years ago. Um, and then he put out part one okay. uh, for sale. Okay. And so that's in the hands of people right now. Uh, it's called part one, A Space Saga. And then now tonight we're going to be playing the world premiere of part two, Sark Star's Ground Force. Mm -hmm. So he has subsequently renamed part three to Sark Star's Three Deep Space. Mm. So they're all in line. Uh, Danny Vasi says, had to make it hard for a reason. Oh, <laughs> interesting. Oh, probably because of demo limitations um, for like Turbo and other things because it, oh, it ends. Right? It ends, so you need and to get And there's no score. High... Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. It does make sense. Yeah. Um, so let's take a look at the Zark Stars uh, website just for some graphical mm. information. Mm. Uh, I do have a question. Yep. Is Zark Stars like the name Zark Stars in the game? Is is it? It's an original game. Yes. It's not a port of any other. Not a port. Uh, no. So why was it started with Zark Stars three? We'll find out. Okay. <laughs> uh, I I don't know yet. I haven't re read the very extensive, extensive answers. Interview. Yes. Okay, that's excellent. So we'll be reading we'll get, it on the we'll fly. We'll get that answer. Yeah. Uh, Maybe. <laughs> an alien force controls a powerful arsenal of weapons in search of cosmic fragments. Upon intercepting the operation, a squad tries to reveal the sinister objective. Embark on the saga about star battles in the depths of space. Zark Stars is a space saga developed for the Atari 2600 video game by L. Camera. Um, and the first game that we're going to be playing is uh, won two awards in the past uh, fourth annual Atari Homebrew Awards. Mm. They won for uh, Best Music and Sound Original mm -hmm. and for Best Packaging. And you'll see why he won for Best Packaging shortly here. Yeah, why did Star Wars start with a four while we're at it? Um, so there is the front of it. There's the box. Really nice box. And he has a history of making boxes like with slip covers. Mm. So you get to see through a window. And he did that with uh, Rally Racer as well. Mm. Um, got the box up here. Carl G., I don't believe it actually was it episode named. four. No, it was when just... When it was first released. It was Star just Wars. Star Wars. And then episode four, five, six, I think all of that came after. Where is it? But I'm not a Star Wars no, it did. expert I by any means. I no, can... no, I can confirm that too. Yeah, but okay. I, I, I'm not an expert at the writing and as or far as what, what he wrote in what order or whether he picked something in the middle of his... Yeah. Draft, who knows, but So there there's um yeah. an early game of his, Rally Racer, earlier game. Yeah. Um and it has a see through window as well. Oh you guys can't see it very well. Because I'm too small. There you go. Uh there's Rally Racer and it pulls out and you can see that um as you pull it out. Lucas did originally say that Star was was yeah. four of nine. That yeah. is true. He did, yeah. and so I assume he had written some kind of storyline, and he 
put it in the middle. Yeah, he's like, oh, I know um, some stuff happened before this. Yeah, and, and built it up before it. But I, I mean, believe when it was first released, it was released as a solo movie. Like it Because wasn't... it's it's a little bit risky to release a movie called Part 4, Part four yeah. before people are like, this is amazing. And once people said, oh, this is amazing, okay, now it's Part 4. Unless you're yeah. out camera and you're like, <laughs> oh, no, we're making one and two. Yeah, but technically he did release one first. Oh, we he did. just got... I mean, t to the people, right? We got an early version of three. Oh, that we played, I see. So one was around. But he didn't name it three at first. Okay. Yeah. Fair anyway, um, so that is the box for it. There's some internals. You get a little sticker and the instructions and a poster. Really nice. Um, and I, I, I love this visual explanation of everything that's on the screen because you get to see all the um, different parts of the game uh -huh. and explanation all around it really really cool um and he shows all that on the screen here and then we will um come back to zark stars 2 after so uh zark stars 1 was originally posted october 1st 2021 on his facebook page um this build that we're playing is from november 19th 2021 mm -hmm. it's a 16k game other games he has made, uh, he's been involved with a Numerator uh, hack, Midnight Commando, Polar Rescue, Rally Racer, mm -hmm. uh, Satellite Fortress, uh, Zark Stars 1, A Space Saga, Zark Stars 2, Ground Force, Zark Stars 3, Deep Space, and ZPH the game. Yeah. So he is actually the de developer of the upcoming ZPH, ZPH the game. Yes. Yes. So we'll be playing that in a little while. Mm -hmm. Not tonight, but... <laughs> Um, and Zark Stars 1 is or was, yeah, it, I think you can still buy it. Let's see. Oh, what is this? Oh, it emails him. It says you, <laughs> it still has a link to buy it. So mm -hmm. I'm guessing there are copies available of Zark Stars 1. Excellent. Yeah. Um, okay, let's get on with it and start playing. That must make The Force Awakens 7 of I mine. know, nostalgic. You're throwing some Star Trek uh, <laughs> puns in there. Terrible. Terrible, bad, bad. <laughs> you do not let Ready. those universes cross. You no. know, it's like it's like the um, Ghost it's like Busters. Ghostbusters and letting the streams cross. It just yep. you're not supposed you just, to do that. Just cannot do that. No. <laughs> Did anyone see the new Ghostbusters movie? We have I, not seen it yet. Well, we haven't I seen Ma seeing, Matrix either. <laughs> I, no, we haven't. And I remember seeing the trailer. And then I never actually saw it get released anywhere. Did it come out? It did. I think it came and went. Yeah, people did. Yeah, it came out. Yeah. So Guess we just off. didn't we just didn't pay <laughs> much attention to it. Okay. So here's the instructions for Zark Stars One. If you want to load it up, right. please. Zark Stars One. Ooh, exciting. Now get all the volumes going so we played this wait what mark hamill and patrick stewart appeared together in an uber eats commercial we clearly didn't get that here or no, maybe we I don't get tv i, I don't remember. think i've seen that maybe i didn't see I'm gonna it. have to look that up well that's kind of um so we played this last december 14th 2021 okay Not too long yeah i do i do remember this one it's very very hard it's very very hard, very hard. yes um <laughs> Make sure the difficulty is on easy. Yep. And we can start it further along in the game. Okay. If we don't, if we don't accomplish what that's, we want to accomplish. That's fair enough. Yeah. Um, hello back to Victor M from Brazil. Hello, all the Brazilians that are tuning in tonight. Yes. Difficulty switches. Advance. Okay. Traveling in the darkness of space. You can. You can go for it. You know what? Yep, shoot the top one. Down a bit, down a bit, down, down a bit, down a bit. Shoot the blinking green thing. A little blinking th green thing inside the force field. <laughs> Oops. Oh, no. Oh, sorry, kitty. Sorry. See the brink? There you go. Ah, ah, ah. <laughs> <laughs> Traveling in the darkness of space aboard the Andromeda A. N2 spaceship, the command panel's radar tracked an alien station. Heading for Neptune, carrying a powerful arsenal of energy controlled by a robot brain. 
The Cetus station navigates in search of stellar fragments for his as yet unknown objective. Now you must invade the immense fortress, traverse its entire length, and face the sinister force until the structure's ingrained generators collapse. Capturing the Zark Star and averting impending disaster. However, by touching the obscure fragment, you're automatically transported to another station hidden in the immensity of space. Uh, and it's not... Uh, uh, that's complaint. <laughs> oh, death. Instant death. Instant, Instant death. death. Yeah. <laughs> How many bases spread across the cosmic infin infinity will you need to defeat? What will be the plan of this robot alien mind? There's no time for questions. It's time for a lot of action. That's for sure. He has packed the screen full. That so you need to keep dodging up and down know, because there is no safe spaces whatsoever. Well, you have to find the pattern of it. So Ugh. easy equals not quite as soul crushingly difficult. If you can train a cat to hit reset for you, that would be outstanding. Oh it my goodness. Be. Yeah, to invade the space station, destroy one of the reactors at the top or bottom of the laser, turning off the external force field. You have six seconds to infiltrate the base or you'll be completely eliminated. I think this has the quickest possible death in any video game. A like game over in any video game. Mm -hmm. Like, you don't just lose a life. Yeah. You actually is game over within six seconds. Yeah. <laughs> if you can't shoot that dot. Oh, good one. Right away. It's pretty easy to shoot once you know you need to shoot it. Your fleet consists of six ships displayed at the bottom of the screen, which is very generous. Six six lives. Whoa, that was close. And you hit it. Yeah. Dodging. Um, the radar informs you of the location within the enemy base, so it has a little progress meter at the bottom. Very much like... Uh, oh, what is that classic uh, 2600 game... Oh, I went down and set up. Oh, what is that game where you can fire in all four directions? Vanguard RC70 got it. Very Vanguardy. Oh, you hit it! You hit it yourself. Well, I'm trying to dodge the green thing because <laughs> I'm not even looking at shooting. I'm trying to avoid even thinking about shooting the. Uh oh. <laughs> Uh, the color of the radar indicates what station you're at. Um, when crossing the barriers, the Andromeda is resupplied and your fleet re receives another support ship. You can press um, select to continue where you're at. Select? Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, that's much better. You should have said that earlier. <laughs> um, Advance along the space station, avoiding the alien attack, avoiding crashing into walls, opponents, and defense towers. Easier th said than done. Yeah, Destroy enemies, <sighs> scoring points. Along the way, you'll find two barriers with 500 and 600 cycles, respectively. Uh, when approaching the Andromeda, it automatically slows down, facilitating accurate firing uh, into the force field. See, I guess get to continue. Reactor. The defense towers slide automatically autonomously across the station services attacking the Andromeda. Andromeda's energy tank lasts approximately two minutes, which supposedly allows it to cross one station compartment at a time. So you do have a fuel uh, meter, but in the first couple waves, you won't run out of fuel. Yeah, you only get three lives when you continue. So joystick left, accelerate, joystick right, decelerate. So there is going fast and slow. So it just yeah. speed, speeds up the movement of the screen. Carl's pro tips, avoid the missiles. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's it's all about dodging the missiles, really. Mostly. But, the other guys are pretty... sometimes they screw you over because their timing is such... Like, it hit me just as I... Uh... Yeah, because when you're... I, I lost... Because you can't shoot while you're inv invulnerable, which is, is annoying because sometimes... Uh, yay! Stage two! Oh, God. Right up that. <laughs> so now you don't get the craziness at the top and the bottom. Yeah, I find that 
worse, actually. Level two is easier is than easier. level one. There yeah. is an extra bullet in the middle shooting, which is yeah. not too bad. It doesn't shoot too often. So the different types of enemies, uh, robot ship, uh, UFO, and cargo ship, all 100 points. Alien S, 150. Combat ship and patrol ship, 150. Laser torpedo is 500 points. Cetus space station is 1,000 points. And the star is 3,000. So obstacles, defense tower, blue laser, base laser shot, which I'm guessing is the green that's coming. Uh, main generator and laser cannon. On level two, you have to accelerate. Oh, Leo. Do you? Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> and this uh, level has uh, my favorite song by The Cure called the For A Forest. In it? Kind of. It's inspired by a forest. <laughs> by The Cure. Confirmed by the developer. So, difficulty switches. Uh, full game A, A, or B, B. From Station 2, A, B. Only Station 3, B, A. So are these stations? Or, let's see. Almost dead. No, they're barriers, not stations. Okay. <laughs> Hello, your rapper. From Sao Paulo, Brazil. What am I doing at this end? Do you recall? Same thing. Yep, same thing. Sure. God, get in line! There we go. <laughs> <sighs> Stage three. Okay. Worse, worse. Now, on this, you can reset just like normal and, and get more lives. But. If you're on the boss, like actually on the boss, and you reset, you, oh, go, you're, you're, you're you go back to the beginning of this. I level. remember, I remember that. Okay, so let's get on to the. Oh, the game audio is a bit loud. Yeah, it's, it's a loud game. I'll turn it down a bit. Thank you. <laughs> Stop crashing in the I'm bottom. not. I'm trying to dodge bullets. The game says otherwise. You are crashing. I'm trying bottom. to dodge bullets. Oh, I hate how timing of you becoming not invincible anymore means <laughs> oh. you run into things. That like, that's was unavoidable. Always, but that happens a lot, yeah. unfortunately. Yeah, it's because you can't you can't shoot. <laughs> you can't shoot when you first start. Getting your exercise. So, Leandro Camera. Hello, everybody. Hi, James and Tanya. Thank you for the opportunity to showcase the games on today's show and for the interview questions. Cat's freaking out. <laughs> I, enjoy, I enjoy answering Still high. them. Yeah. Right now, I'm traveling oh, mid-flight and couldn't be there with all of you on the show, but I hope you enjoy the show and have fun. As soon as I, get, I, as soon as I land, I'll watch the show and read all your comments. Thanks. I hope that you understand my English and the answers to the questions James sent me and that I don't seem too rude. <laughs> <laughs> at points because of the language uh, because of language barrier this is never the intention but there is a language barrier <laughs> what was your first console or computer <laughs> RC70 says I love the game but it appears to have been designed for maximum frustration <laughs> instant death non-stop repetitive music and not couch compliant it would be better oh do you want me to reset I think it's too late what? What do I have to do? Shoot that missile. Oh, you lost. Ah, that's okay. You want to play? I can read it up. Okay. <laughs> oh, it starts at the beginning of the level. That's not too bad. No, it's not too bad. Wasted a life. Yeah, you did. I did? Yeah. yeah. James is much better at this than I am. Uh, it's still, it's still would, continuous let's, death. Let's though. not say <laughs> much better. Let's say marginally better. Okay. What was your first console computer? My first contact with a home video game was probably around 1981 when I saw a Brazilian clone of a Pong at, a, at the house of a childhood friend, which belonged to his uncle. Oh my God. The device had a gun, and I was very impressed that you what? aimed at the screen and hit the Pong bowline. Oh, Pong, yeah, Pong with a gun. I have one of those. Yeah. 
I believe the following year I played a black and white arcade, certainly also a Brazilian clone of Taito, uh, from a racing game called Formula One or something like that. My dad took me to the arcade and I remember losing the game very quickly. I have a very strong su suspicion this, that this game unconsciously influenced me to design Rally Racer. Oh my god. <laughs> Yeah, it would be better if shooting ended your invulnerability. Yeah, yeah. that would be a good Yeah, addition. because it's very hard to time it so that you're not in a position um, where you don't instantly die because of all the shots oh my God. and everything around you. Very challenging. Um, but my first console was the Atari 2600 two years later. It is important to know that we are talking about Brazil where the Atari officially arrived only in 1983. A very expensive console by the standards of the time and with a considerable time delay compared to the original US release date, which was 1977. However, this meant that Brazilians were already introduced to the device with a richer library of games. True. Uh, ranging from combat to more complex, th complex things from Imagic and Activision. I was nine years old in 1983 and the Atari uh, was the perfect toy for the generation around, uh, around that age. I shot it twice. Yeah? Yeah. You have to shoot missile twice. Three times? I'm guessing. Usually it's three times. Um, I got my own Atari, Brazilian but licensed, most likely in 1984, but I, ha I had already played it months before on a neighbor's console. Brazil at that time came from the end of a military dictatorship which began in 1964. Um, and which in the early 1980s reverberated in various trade policies with the foreign markets. Imports were prohibited with the aim of preserving the internal market and encouraging the creation of a national technological in industry, which in practice didn't work very well. No, if nobody's <laughs> making a video game console in Brazil, Brazilians get no Nothing. video games. <laughs> yes. To, to supply the demand for games, since the consoles were being nationalized or smuggled, many companies reverse engineered and released the ah. games. Well, that makes sense. Uh, most of the time, just removing the credits from the game screen, not worrying about copyrights. This caused the Brazilian market to have numerous manufacturers with many games available and varying prices. I think what's interesting about situations like that where people are forced to pirate and reverse engineer is you end up with a bunch of people who have knowledge of the programming end yep. um, out of necessity to kind of figure out how things work. <laughs> I want to see someone beat this game without using a continue. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, so do I. <laughs> Rod Kassler says, I'm not sure this is the ultimate tension relief or the best frustration generator. Uh, your back is going to hurt tomorrow from the multiple restarts. <laughs> yes, we have to put a, a treat on the on the restarts. Oh, oh no. I think I'm going to go on to uh, number two. Okay. <laughs> Just so we can see it. I can don't know we if skip it's... forward or no? Yeah, we can. Okay. So it's A, B for part two. Okay. Oh, oh, that's good. Blue. Um, anyway, uh, to same. continue on with the interview. I was born in the south of Brazil in Porto Alegre. I hope I said that right. Uh, a cold place closer to Uruguay and further from the center of the country, far from Sao Paulo and Rio de Janeiro, which is where most of the big companies, as well as those in the backyard, um, daily produce tons of games with simple packaging and with very precarious instruction manuals, <laughs> precarious. or even without manuals. In Porto Alegre, we also didn't have a beach all year round, different from how many outsiders imagine Brazil. So it was common for me and my friends to lock ourselves in our house to play Atari or go to an arcade to see the older boys play. Um, so much on the screen. There's so many bullets. <laughs> <laughs> it's great. My Atari 2600 came with the Asteroids game, which I liked a lot at first. I was delighted with the illustrations in the manual, but I ended up getting tired of the game quickly. In the 2000s, I started to like Asteroids again, but at the, at the time, I really didn't like it. Well, when you only have like one game, you get bored of it really fast, right? Yeah. My parents went out of their way to gift my little brother and I with games for the next three years, and we had River Raid, Enduro, Spider-Man, wow. Mr. Postman, Frogger, Star Wars Empire Strikes Back, Frontline, Zaxxon, Raiders of the Lost Ark, my favorite game to date, E.T., my second favorite game, never had a problem with it, Superman, Super Cobra, Towering Inferno, and Bermuda Triangle. I don't know what Bermuda Triangle is. I've never played that one. Yeah. I will. But, um... Cool. 
Yeah, a lot of good games in that list there. Nice. Most, oh my god. Most of these games are still with me, and I think these end up being my most direct references. Well, that makes sense. It's a good collection of games, too, over the years. Yep. But I knew many other titles at the time, more than 100 for sure. I really liked the console. Since the cartridges were expensive, expensive parents paid in 12 installments a year at some department store. For a game? Wow. wow. Uh, you had to find other people in the neighborhood or at school to borrow the games for a week or a few days. That's smart to trade them Yeah. back and forth. Yeah. Uh, during summer vacations, I would roam the neighborhood looking for friends of friends who had games that were different from mine or that I didn't know yet. It's kind of the equivalent... Our video store rented video games. Yeah, yeah. And the ones we liked, we would buy secondhand. That's right, Because my yeah. parents did not want to pay full price for video games. They were just... No, they didn't trust that you would be entertained that long with them, I well, guess. Well, and I think it was just expensive. Video games, like, our console was uh, the original Nintendo. And yeah. um, they the... were expensive. They weren't cheap. Video games were more expensive back then like really I think expensive. relatively yeah and so we would rent a game and if we really liked it my parents would buy it second hand so it would be it would be cheaper video games have never been cheaper than they are right now yeah actually. yeah they're, they're really inexpensive comparatively even even like the uh triple a <laughs> nintendo titles Ooh, that is second time around on level two or, actually i didn't play level two nice Ooh. Ah. I would say this is a good abs workout. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> so that was question one? Or? Nope. Um, and then I'll just finish it off. Okay. He says, later in 1988, my younger brother got a Master System and then a Mega Drive, but ah. I couldn't play. The directional pad had switched sides and the extra buttons got to me. Hey, Victor M., thank you for subscribing. Thank you, Victor M. Woo. I just watched him play and was blown away by those new graphics. Um, oh, going, there, there was my the, there was my farewell to video games. Going yeah. from twenty six hundred to uh, Sega, Sega uh, Genesis. Yeah. Which one was it? Uh, Master System. Oh, Master System. And then Still. a Mega Drive Genesis. Oh, yeah, 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 both of those. Oh, God, damn! I would like to finish the third stage that would be nice yeah. it's so hard rc70 i'm pretty sure my parents paid more for the legend of zelda than any game i've ever <laughs> bought for myself yeah <laughs> yeah yeah I'm trying to think of what games we bought new on our, our nintendo just the pack in mario brothers super mario brothers right. and duck hunt yeah that was pack -in. Did so I have that doesn't count I've got my lives. No, I don't! Shoot! Start shooting! Okay. One. No. Nope. Got two. Uh, uh, arg. In okay. 80s dollars, yeah. Okay. Um, we're going to move on to game number two. Or should we? No, we'll look at... Um, This should be stage three. I'm not sure what the differences are. I guess it's a little bit faster. So, so far we have not made it past the single boss. <laughs> it's so hard. <laughs> ah! <laughs> so level one is brutal. Nice. Level two and three are fine. I don't, I don't mind those. So level one is 49 brutal. 49 to 59 would have, been, would have been dollars in the 80s? Uh, that was a lot of money. Yeah. Yeah. It was a lot. Like, they're over $100 equivalent now. Well yeah. Over. And I mean... I mean, a Switch game is, isn't is cheap, but... Nope. $79.99. Yeah. I think they cap out for... Uh, that's Canadian. Yeah. <laughs> but, I mean, equivalent to back then, I think, yeah, it would have been a lot more. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh. Bah! <laughs> is that the end of that question? That question, yes. I okay. can move on to the next one, but... Um, um, it depends if you want to flip and... We will probably flip. Okay. Ha. Can't win stage one or two, maybe. Third stage is the charm, <laughs> says RC7. Yeah, that's right. It's only harder. Okay, we're good. Okay. We're good. Weren't you switching? Yes, I, I was switching. I just wanted to actually go to stage three, mm -hmm. just to show... Because I don't think we've ever switched over to stage three. 
Okay, now it is time for the exclusive world premiere mm. of Zark Stars 2, Ground Force. Uh, we're going to be showing the trailer first for it. Nice. Um, let's switch over to that. Um, so this is this game is for sale right now. They have not started shipping, I don't think, um, but they have offered it for sale. But let's take a look at the web page for this. So there is some graphics for it. Get that. There's that that face, the that, face, the laughing face when yeah, you fail. I love it. Oh, that looks <laughs> beautiful. Your ship. Great. Great graphics. Mm -hmm. I ordered thinking, uh, I think ship is early early April, okay. RC70s. Nice, yeah. nice. There's the box. Heart, is that the same surrounding? Yeah, is it? It's got the, yeah. So same uh, box mm -hmm. on the outside, and the center has changed. Mm -hmm. And there's all the stuff in the center, inside of it. Another poster. Um, the manual. Uh, another manual, little little thing. When I ordered, they had copies of Rally Racer, too. Okay, so they've got everything in stock. Mm -hmm. Yep. It's another look inside. And there is the link to email them. Sarkstarsgame at gmail.com. Okay, so let's go to the uh, trailer. Uh, hopefully it's not super loud. So close your ears. <laughs>
There we very, go. Very, very impressive. We are just, we are just ooing and aahing over it, the trailer. Yeah, we're, we didn't we're miss much. Mirroring your comments, yeah. pretty much. <laughs> Yeah, I'm yeah. really enjoying these trailers people are making yeah. for uh, video for 2600 games yeah. now. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, we're going to be playing premiere, world premiere yeah. of Zark Stars 2 Ground Force. You got a little teaser there. Yeah. Um, suspicions confirmed alien excavations at the core of the last planet in the system have been discovered and are in full swing. A defense base located on the surface was activated to contain the advances of the mysterious plan, deploying the Venus VN-8 fleet to reach as quickly as possible. The stellar refinery installed at the end of the planet and collect as many stars that were discovered during the mining. Now Lord Computer knows of the intentions to thwart his sinister objective and has ordered the excavation machines to engage the Venus fleet directly. Will the robotic mind be able to defeat the defense base and continue with its evil plan? Only you bring the answer. Your mission is to get to the edge of the planet where the stellar refinery set up by the aliens is located, destroying all enemy vehicles and mining ships, and rescue the five stars in the course of the complete mission. The Venus, fl Venus fleet is made up of six planetary range defense ships that are indicated on the left side of the launch pad. Each ship takes off with a full energy tank and three tier fairing uh that protects venus from enemy fire and changes color to signal her weakening so we'll start the game and continue on with that information mm. okay Ready. let's change the graphic to the cartridge boom Are you going to continue reading? Uh, are or you playing? You want to play. No, no, you play first. I'll watch you okay. play. Uh, and I can You do need to read around. the instructions. Okay. Where, where do you want me to start from? Uh, right there. Okay. The Venus Fleet. This is the instructions for Xarxars 2. The Venus Fleet is made up of six planetary range defense ships that are indicated on the left side of the launch pad. Yes. Each ship takes off with a full energy tank and a three-tier... Fairing that protects Venus from enemy fire and changes color to signal her weakening. Okay. Uh, whenever you lose one of the ships, the mission command will send a replacement ship to the battlefield. Press joystick button for, for Venus to take off. Okay. Uh, Venus ship... Uh, okay. Joystick, move, directional in eight positions. Laser button only when on the ground. Yeah. So you can only shoot from the ground. Shield, joystick down and button. On the ground or in flight. Okay, you have a shield. Down you have a shield, and the button. Down and button. Okay. And you can only shoot when you're on the ground. Venus's laser cannon can only be activated when the ship is on the planet's ground. Use the joystick button to shoot enemies. Take off and land using the eight possible directions of the joystick to fly Venus in flight mode. Leaving the joystick in a neutral position, the ship remains suspended in the air. Okay. So, uh, Nostalgia said, nice combination of sprites and play field to make the buildings and base. Yes. So you've got some uh, sprites for the planets. Yeah. Um, you've got the rough gray for the... The base, I guess. The yeah. base, and it's all play field, except for there's vertical gray stripes that... Oh, there's only three of them? That must be another... Um, sprite mm. but they're too far apart so it must be using two sprites on either <laughs> side interesting but very very good use and the shading of the of the reddish brown oh, that's on the, beautiful on the horizon and someone so said nice. the shading on the planets that they've got a little darkness very on very one side. nice yeah. and the flashing stars everything looks beautiful yeah. everything looks beautiful um so blah blah Should blah go for it? take off and land using eight possible directions in flight mode leaving the joystick neutral and is in uh suspended in the air in emergency situations the shield stored on the surface of the planet can be activated joystick down and button on the ground or in mid-flight energy recharge to recharge venus's energy fly to the top of the screen putting your ship in docking position okay uh, wait for the carrier ship to approach to transfer part of its cargo to Venus's compartments. Yeah, we saw that in the trailer. Yeah. Very careful. If you're not in a docking position or if you leave it during reloading, you collide with the carrier, damaging the ferry. Oh, okay. So what's docking position? Um, it, you you kind of change 
graphic. Okay. So you can see it uh, being a little different. To summon the carrier ship charged with energy from the excavations, you need to destroy two rotors. It is important that the carrier ship is out of the scene during the two hits. So you don't want to accidentally <laughs> shoot the carrier ship, I think is what Oh, I'm okay. Yeah. Um, enemies. Mining vehicle on the horizon, 15 points. Digging okay, rotor, 50 go. points. Go ahead. Okay. Energy recharge, 84 points. Vertical drill, 150 points. Drill ship, 200 points. Carrier ship, 500 points. Star, 3,000 points. So you get points for shooting your carrier ship? Yeah. Well, yeah. you just did that. Yeah. yeah. Well, then... Ah! I hit by a bullet. But, yeah, you have to a lot of shoot two rotors, is what it says. So there's one rotor. I'm guessing those are the spinning things. Like, that is a rotor. That's... Right there, the spinning thing. Digging rotor, 50 points. Yeah, that's one of them. So once you need more... Should I try for a refill? I don't know, just oh, to... I have to be in docking position. Yeah. And and is it just when your red goes down all the way that you have to worry about it? Yeah, so it's getting there. Yeah. Have so... you put the shield on? No. Ah. There's docking. See, it, it's a little bit sideways. Yeah. Ah, cool. And there's no gravity, so you do have to move down. There you go. We got Which two is rotors. kind of good. Yeah. And I can get a little bit more. You're safe up here. Yeah. Oh, just change colors. Ah. I'm guessing the thing on the ground will kill you if it runs into you. So. Yeah, that's like a mining, mining ship. Maybe. Obstacles mining vehicle on the ground. Ah, yeah. okay. Enemies fire at two different speeds, indicated by the color of the shots. For every three full flights of the carrier on the screen, enemies gain more speed. Oh, that's for a happens. total of six levels. After facing. Media. Evening, and thank you for subscribing. Thank you for subscribing. Um, what was I saying? For every three full flights of, of the carrier on the screen, enemies gain more speed for a total of six levels. After facing the sixth attack wave, you will be exposed to Zark Star's rescue. Oh. Watch out for Venus's energy tank. It lasts for one Oops. minute. Keep pressing the shield. Um, alert 20 seconds and needs oh alert if you get an alert you have 20 seconds left oh, okay. and needs to be recharged frequently if the ship's energy runs out during combat the game is over even if you still have fleet ships in the defense base uh, oh so do not let the energy go down okay yeah. whenever you rescue Zark Star 3000 points will be added to the score and your ship will be relaunched to the next battle point with the fairing restored and the energy tank full oh, look at that mining thing it's stuck Oh, it doesn't, it doesn't move when you're up in the air. Um, mining vehicles work at the refinery. Do not shoot at you uh, so as not to en endanger the plants. So you just need to <laughs> dodge them. Okay, good. The okay. game has five battle scenarios. To get a better result in the score, Venus needs to cross all of them and, if possible, unravel an enigma in the excavations of the planet. The game is over if all six ships in your fleet are shot down or Venus's energy runs out. The last one. Yeah. You win the game if you manage to reach the stellar refinery built by the aliens and deactivate the operation, rescuing the last captured star. Oh, oh god. According to the extent of the mission accomplished, you will be decorated as long as you bravely resist until the final scene. So difficulty switches, battle scenarios. One open mines BB, two excavation one AA, three mines of the dunes AB. Four excavation two VA, five stellar refinery. So you can jump Sorry. through the levels. You <laughs> oh, can jump okay. through the levels if you want. Well, I still have it on a different difficulty. I think I started on the wrong difficulty. Don't switch it now. BA. So oh. BA. Oh, I just died. This is four excavation two, so you're going to level four. Oh, or God. the fourth battle, the, the fourth battle scenario. S oh, so. So there's five battle scenarios, so. I've skipped ahead quite a bit. Maybe, but we can switch it to BB and, and yeah. start from there. I mean, you're doing pretty good, I think. I only lost one ship. It's cool. There's a lot on the screen. Yeah, the, he's used the horizontal quite effectively. Have you found a star yet? That must be at the end Not of yet. the level. Because yeah. the star has the most points. So how do you get to the end of a level? Like where... Oh! oh. Six. There's six levels, so they speed up six oh, times. Oh, okay, yeah. I think and it's, then at the end... I think it's it sped says, up like three or four times now. Yeah. Um, I read that. 
For every three full flights of the carrier on the screen, enemies gain more speed for a total of six ah. levels. Yeah, so there's six waves. And then you'll be exposed to Zarkstar's rescue. So that must be the start. So I think if you go up and down three times, that's the next wave. And then three times, that's the next wave. So it would... Oh, what is that? Did you get shot? No, it's my shield I accidentally put on because oh. if you land and you start firing immediately, yeah. um, you put your shield on. Gotcha. Like if you're pressing down. You don't want to... You want to land and then let go and then press, um, then fire. Otherwise, you waste a shield, which I haven't found a really a need to use a shield. Pretty... Oh god! Oh, Neo Media, I'm very sorry to hear that. Uh, Neo Media, said, sorry I missed so many shows. I lost my younger brother last oh, month. Oh my god! Sorry to hear yeah, that. Yeah, that's very sad. But we are happy you're back. Yeah. Welcome back. Ooh, things are fast going across the screen now. The bullets aren't any faster coming down, mm. so it's not too bad. I think I'm on like wave five. Mm. Might as well get some. Kind of, some of the things slow down when the carrier comes by too. I'm yeah, guess. which is I think you nice. went up a level there. They're all flashing oh. now. <gasps> oh no. frogger when you have to get up to to refuel so the refueling advances your levels right mm -hmm. another crazy flashing yeah very colorful i like it <laughs> get that spinny thing the spinny thing is really what gets drives you everything because it makes <gasps> you died oh yeah you stay on the same level i think mm -hmm. yeah i think you have to yeah, kill the dark star the it looks like it's yeah yeah they're the same speed there is auto fire. GameStar says it somehow reminds me of an Apollo game. I haven't really played enough Apollo games mm. to really have, re have a reference. Yeah. Can you name oh. some Apollo games? Oh! <gasps> That's the Zark Star. Do you shoot it? No, you have to go into it. You go into it? Oh. Did you get it? No. No, you did. Oh, oh I no. I it was on the edge. Oh no! Do Are I you start? back? Do I start it? Oh, yes. You do. Okay. I think I'm gonna go from the bottom. Oh my god! How do you do it? You have to get in there and stay on top of it, maybe. There. Ah. Oh. It's very quick timing. Super quick timing. Charles Whelan says, "Yeah, the background looks a bit like space Jam." Ah. Okay. So now I'm on the next level, the the last level, level five, because you start at level four on this mm -hmm. one. You said. Mm -hmm. Yeah, really uh, good use of playfield graphics for the everything that's on the ground. Mm -hmm. So we want to read another question. Mm -hmm. Space chase, space cavern. Oh, space cavern. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, oh in the trailer they went in diagonally moving with the dots. Maybe okay. that's easier. I don't know, but it worked from it, the bottom. So. Yeah, it was very tight, though. So. Okay, so our second question to Leandro. Camera. Camera. Like a camera. Okay. Leandro. That's how, that's how he uh, pronounced it for me. Um, tell us about your background with computer programming. So, uh, Leand Leandro says... I am a musician. I had a band that had some success in the center and south of Brazil, and we stayed on the road for 18 years, recording records wow. and playing shows. That sounds like quite an extensive music career. 18 years yes. is a long time. On the road. Uh, on the road. In addition to playing in most of Brazil, we also played in Argentina, Peru, and Uruguay. We did an MTV acoustic, and we were awarded wow. the MTV, MTV Awards at the time. Oh my god. Wow. Very nice. <laughs> Uh, well, my life was directly associated with that until five years ago. I have no computer training. I even tried something in the mid-90s. After graduating in accounting in 1996, I attended data processing for a few months, but that really hurt my head and I dropped out. <laughs> um, I didn't have computers as a kid, 
They were even more expensive than video games, obviously, but I discovered MSX in 1987 at a friend's house, and I was very impressed. We played Ghostbusters. <laughs> I also had access a Good little game. earlier to a computer a Spectrum ZX80, in Brazil known as TK90 or something like that. Oh. Uh, that belonged to a good friend from school. I proposed him that we make a game together and sell it on cassettes, but we weren't able to make more than one character move on the screen. <laughs> oh boy. In this case, he knew how to do it, I didn't. A few years ago, I found some of these sketches in a fifth grade notebook. Wow. <laughs> I also remember computer courses spread all over Brazil at that time. It was a fever, but it didn't cross my mind to waste my time learning something like that, which I find strange today because I certainly would have liked it when I was younger. That isn't me crashing when I'm um, all glowy. It's me with the shields the on. The shield on, yeah, it yeah, It seems yeah. dramatic, but it's just shields. Um... But the truth is that I was never an authentic nerd, and in 1985, the first Rock in Rio took place in Brazil. It all changed the course for many teen teenagers, myself included. But even so, Atari didn't get out of my head during the 90s. My console was broken, but then I opened the box, looked at it, and saw if the cartridges were still there, if my mother hadn't put an end to it. Mothers have a tendency what? to do that. What'd she put an end to? <laughs> I wanted to, at some point, go back to that, do something related to Atari. A lot of people don't know, even Brazil, because I don't care to tell, but I'm one of the biggest collectors of Brazilian Atari cartridges in Brazil. Wow. Uh, now it's I started, been revealed. Yes. I started collecting in 2004 after some failed attempts before, and today I lost count of the amount of cartridges I have. Probably more than 3,000 cartridges. I co-produced... That's a lot of cartridges. That's for Atari 2600? You must have the largest collection of Brazilian like, that's huge. That's a lot of cartridges. I co-produced a feature-length documentary by my friend and historian Marcus Garrett, which tells the story of the arrival of video games in Brazil during that period. What? <laughs> I want to see that documentary. We'll have to get it, in, it translated, probably. Yeah. Well, yeah, that's uh, a problem. The film is on YouTube, if anyone wants to see it. Oh. Called 1983, The Year of Video Games in Brazil. Uh, YouTube does auto-translations. Auto, Excellent. So, yeah. I've also collaborated on a few books on the same subject over the past 10 years, including the volume dedicated to Atari and a video game in the encyclopedia. That is cool. 3,000 cartridges. That's, a, that's, just, that's, a, <laughs> that's lot. a lot of cartridges. Um, what are people saying? Oh, God. Okay. Uh, Charles Whelan says, very nice. Um, I wonder what the developer could make with a sim card. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Nostalgic says, Being a musician explains the extensive background music in, the, in these games, which are fantastic. That is one of my questions, so yes. wait, wait for that. Okay. Oh, down to two. This game is considerably more forgiving mm -hmm. than uh, Zarkstar's 1. Greetings to Garretinus. So I'm guessing that is the Marcus Garrett mentioned. Uh, oh. Who did the... 3,000 and no doubles, says Charles <laughs> No doubles. Uh, no. We're going to have to watch that that, that uh, documentary. Oh, for sure. Big fan of documentaries in this because house. so It'll be uh, very enlightening about Brazil because there's such a huge video game community in yes, Brazil. Yes, yeah. Especially for Sega uh, stuff, Atari 2600 oh, and Sega smashes. stuff. Oh, it has Portuguese closed captioning but not English subtitles from what I can tell. YouTube does do auto translation. Yeah. It's not always very good, it's but good it's probably good enough. Yeah. Oh, oh. crazy! Oh my oh, goodness! Oh, it's on the like it's last on stage. Super high stage. Everything's a flashy, flashy. Oh, wow. Woo. Um, so in 2015, I conceived more work games, where I released the game A New Marauder and Rally Racer. Oh a new God. A new Marauder has been completely oh, redone by looking at the code bite by bite, changing it, and seeing the results on the screen. That was my first school on the subject. More than one friend later told me that I had done it the other way around, and that the way I did it by myself, disassembling and reassembling the game, was something difficult. It's always <laughs> worth doing it the difficult way, because that's how you learn. Yeah, right? right. Uh, I didn't know how to do it any other way. <laughs> I did a lot of hacks over a period of time to test what happened or how the code was laid out and how it behaved with certain modifications. 
most of these versions of the game ended up bugged, so I abandoned and moved on. What? Which was a great empirical oh. learning experience. I died because I was, like, right on top of the star when it appeared. Oh, no. Well, you have... <laughs> Not as hard as I thought. Is this the end of the game? Is it? It might be. Oh, yeah. there's, there's uh, a shadow. Because we started on level five. We did. We started on level four. Sorry. So I went through four and five. <laughs> four but and five, but... That's good, because we get to see. Yeah. Om nom 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 nom. I love that head. It's such a good head. It's, it's such like a good head. little brain. You can see its brain through its clear head. Okay, now it's your it. turn. Now where did you end? Uh, right, the next question. Oh, so perfect. you're on question three. Hey, kitty. Hey, Atari cat. I think he's come down off his cot. Did you eat all the... No, no, there's tons. Time for more treats? There's tons of evil green guy. Anybody want to give treats? Yes! It's treat time! Yes! Hey, it's treat time. Hey, RC70. Now, he's already got his catnip, so... We're gonna... He's getting treats. treats. Don't forget the bell. Oh, that's right. I don't know how we do it. Here you go. Okay, ready? Are you starting... Are you starting at the level one? Oh. Put it BB. BB? Oh, yeah, press the button. No, it just crashes. BB? Yep, BB. Actually, you have to turn the game on and off and on. Oh, okay. you won. I guess it's like, oh, you probably don't want to play. <laughs> At our yacht left. Ready. Okay, did you ring it? Did he ring it? Ring it? I don't know. Ring the bell. <laughs> I mean, look at it. You're just flailing wildly. <laughs> Ring it. Ring the bell. Ring it. Ring the bell. Come on. Do it for RC70. He's purring right now. Come on. Come on. <laughs> Ring it. Ring it. What are you doing? Oh, there we go. The that was soft, ring ever. but that worked. Okay. Load it up. There. Now you've got it. I'm waiting, lol. Well, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> waiting and not performing. Not not saying I want it. Mm-hmm. Okay. You gonna play? Okay. Yeah, you already played. That's your shield. Oh, and I died. I died. Sensitive. Oh, you turned blue. Oh, because the ship's there. Okay. No, that, oh, one more. Yeah, yeah, okay, 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 okay. There you go, two more. What? Oh, we have to be on the ground. Yep, you have to be on the ground to start or shooting. Or you just immediately start triggering. Ah! Ah! You made me die! Yes, you did. You walked right in front of me. So the story goes. Ah, stop it! It's half a second. No, it's half, it's a, second. half a second's enough. Half a second's enough. So I can confidently say that uh, Zark <laughs> Stars 2 is infinitely easier than Zark Stars 1. There you go, your dog. Oh, they change color. Oh, I didn't mean to do that. I'm like, I can shoot. You did it again. I did it. Don't press down. Just left and right when you're on the ground. Or else you do put on your shield. Oh. So, it's, I mean, it's not the end of the world. It no. uses up fuel, doesn't it? Uh, Why no. Why am I not no. shooting there? It uses up a shield. The shields are in the bottom left. Oh, is that what they are? Oh, so you, you don't have infinite shields. No, no. I... Ah! Don't shoot the shield when I need it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I never felt the need for a shield at any point. Well, it's easier to dodge, it's, I think. Yeah. Oh, for God's sakes. I find the dark, especially as it passes the... Yes. The, the, the brown uh, shots the brown spots? against the brown. Oh, my gosh. It, it, it totally screws me up. It doesn't get, look oh, easy, just more survivable. Oh. Yeah. 
No, uh, no, I think it's I think it is. Oh, it's it's easier than than one than one for it's, sure. It's a lot more survivable. <laughs> one is hard, but the the yeah the brown shots um, are a little deceptive. So. It is quite fun. It is I'd fun. Have to, I'd have to say there's a lot going on. You have to move around for the the mining ships into danger up above, and having that frogger element to get to the top. Yeah, I like is, that. Is a, a very fun game mechanic. Um, so question three. Did you always envision Zark Star's games to be a series? I wanted to do some kind of space series for Atari, but I didn't know if I was, would ever be able to do it. My first game I conceived for this was Satellite Fortress, designed to be released by More Work, which ended up just being an unfinished prototype. I was developing the game together with my friend and mentor, Heiter... Did you... Read all this out? No. Hmm? No. no. Uh, Hitor Massel. He and I also worked on uh, a lot on a game called Midnight Commando, and it's on YouTube. I believe this may be released someday. But there was this desire to make more spaceship game oh, with a left orientation like Plan Planet Patrol, which I always liked a lot. Uh, no. It was Planet Patrol. It had that shiny cover. Spectre Vision? I've got that. Um, oh, that was lucky. Just enough. I almost died. Oh. Ah! <laughs> the game was shelved, and I didn't know at the time how to finish programming a game by myself. This wasn't much I can do, as Hator was very busy too. Uh, so in generous decision and a lot of patience, Hator started to teach me how to really program in BASIC, a language I only knew from hearing about the MSX era and the courses that were on every corner in the 80s. From this, uh, from learning this, the first draft of Zarkstar's Saga was born, which was Ground Force. The inspiration for it was Mega Mania, obviously more simplified, and today I see it has certain influence from Atlantis and Freeway. A curiosity is that the mothership of the game Deep Space initially belonged to Ground Force, to the Ground Force. Um, so the next question is, tell us a little bit about the order of release of Zark Stars with Part 3, Deep Space, being, being revealed at first, then Part two, 1 and 2. Because we played uh, Part 3 on the show first. And then he uh, went back, renamed it Zark Stars, and put out one and then two that we're playing now. As mentioned, the first game I started programming was Ground Force. At a certain point of the programming, the plug fell, the coin fell, and I partially understood what I was doing through the code. It's something like riding a bike. You get it. As a layman in programming, that didn't make much sense to me at first. I made certain commands by instinct, and Hator uh, explained to me how I should save or optimize the logic. To this day, I don't know how to do this perfectly because it's not something natural for me. But I had a great teacher because he skipped the more theoretical part and simply said, do something. Now that I had a certain notion, I wanted to try other things. In the past, I had already altered a numerator myself and made parts of Rally Racer code, besides the idea, design, and music and some tweaks to the code, together with Flavio Nunez, uh, but it's still in an improvised way. So I went back to thinking about the game with the ship on the left. While Ground Force was in the learning process, I made Zark Stars 1 by myself. At the time, I called it Dark Star, after H.R. Giger, an artist I liked a lot. Remember we watched Dark Star? Yeah. Terrible. Terrible movie. Terrible. <laughs> I, I don't think that's what he's re referencing to, H.R. Giger? Uh, um, <sighs> I think H.R. Giger had um, a, hand in it? a hand in the design. No, did because he? Because he had a hand in the design of Alien, written well, by the same well, yeah. person. And that's directed true. by the same person. That's true. I didn't even think of that. Right. Yeah. Or oh, written by the same person, not directed. Because that was Carpenter who did oh, Dark Star. Yeah. And then the chip fell, the coin fell once and for all, and I could make a whole game. But besides Vanguard, Vanguard, yeah. Laser Gates, R Type from the Master System of Planet Patrol, one game in particular influenced me to go back to the basic idea of Satellite <laughs> Fortress. <laughs> oh. What are you doing? It was crazy ne cat. He was rubbing. It was Neon na Knights made by Rafael Cord Cordoso for the Odyssey. I really liked the simplicity of his game, and that motivated me. <laughs> yeah, this one has uh, dance has looks good. Yeah, it has a lot of great visual elements. All the enemies are animated. Uh, they're spinning in actually different dimensions, different ways. Uh, the guy at the top is spinning this way. The one is spinning this way. One is spinning this way. And one is spinning this way. Uh, 
Or the rotors are spinning this way. Yeah, a lot of a lot of movement. And it's got a lot of shadowing as well. With the uh, craters. But still having a lot of limitations to program, the expected happened and Zarkstars 1 also stagnated. And I left for a new idea, while the previous two were in operating room. It's very common at times you do not have the mastery of the subject. You start something, you see it's not working, and come back when you're ready to evolve the process. Then Deep Space was born. Which was a desire I had to make a game with a star field in the background. But something half analog, half organic. I had no idea how to execute that, so I tried my oh, way. Oh, that was terrible. Oh, dead. destroyed! Look at the planet! <laughs> oh, it's, oh, it's being shot at. It's all destroyed. It is! And that's, well, that's how cool. that's how you lose. <laughs> there's, there's what happens. It looks when you so lose. good though. Everything's oh my gosh. all messed up. Even the planets are different colors now. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So it's it's nice. it's uh, mirrored. So Desolate. it's the same yeah. same thing on the left as the right. Yeah. But it's changed the color. Is that score mode he's using? I'm guessing. Well, not exactly, yeah. but it's very close. Um. I have to print. I'll be okay. Right back. Very bye. quickly. Very quickly. Hi, kitty. I'll finish this question. <laughs> um. I ended up liking the results. Oh, Deep Space was born, blah, blah, blah. Something half analog, half organic. I had no idea how to execute that, so I tried my way. I ended up look, liking the result and took the Ground Force mothership to the new game. At, at the moment, I decided I would release Deep Space, and that's why it was, it was the first to be shown. I decided I would start the saga with the third game. So he literally did make part one first, but released part three or as a work in progress first because that was... Uh, gave more information. Ah, score mode. So it is score mode. So you could set the colors uh, beforehand so you don't have to time out or keep flipping the colors back and forth. Oh, good night, Nostalgic. I'm um, glad uh, you were able to make it. Thanks for showing up, Sark Star Series. Cast the rest of the show in VOD. Good night. Thanks for the stream. No problem. Have a good night. However, with the learning of Deep Space, I went back to the other two games and managed to finish them, each one in its own time, and I realized there really was an order to the story of the saga that I should, in principle, respect that in the releases too. I finished Zark Stars 1 and decided it would be the first one. Then I finished Ground Force that we're playing right now. I uh, went for the graphic materials and productions. Okay. Come back. Hurry, hurry, hurry. <laughs> I can't read and play. <laughs> I could try, but it would be very terrible. Here, you guys can... Look at that screen as a change. Uh, see, everybody's leaving. Everybody's leaving. Everybody's leaving. It's all Tanya's fault. Um, the side effect is <laughs> the side effect uh, uh, was that I didn't come back to finish Deep Space as it's been stagnant since 2020, still under construction. Uh, although I think it's very little left to finish it. In the meantime, I did other tests with the help of Sa Leonardo Santiago and the fourth game appeared, Nebula, which I finished very quickly. At th oh, Rendered Ghost is going. Oh no, everybody's leaving! <laughs> he says, oh well, I better stop lurking and just go! <laughs> oh my god, I almost killed a cat. Cat's going crazy. <laughs> the cat's going nuts! Here, you play, play again and do better. Play again and do better. Make Even it. a cat left. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he'll be back. He knows there's more trees. You have coming. to make it to the crystal. <laughs> the crystal? Oh, the the so star. are we still on the lowest level? Yeah. BB? Well, you didn't finish it, so... No, I'm just wondering. But but do we want to try another level? I played the top level. He didn't play the top level. And finished it. I played level four and five. Yeah. And finish the game. So why don't we try two and see what two looks like? Oh, okay. I'm like, why would I play it over again? That sounds boring. <laughs> Where's the... Uh, there we go. There. Excavation one. AA. Okay. AA. See? This way people don't leave. <laughs> Instead of watching my terrible gameplay. All right. Different oh, colors? it's a different... Orangey. Yeah. Very nice. Oh, kitties. Oh, sad cats. Uh, I see in the manual that you even have Zark Stars 4 planned beyond this trilogy called Nebula. 
Did you plan for this to be an ongoing series of games? Cat's crazy. Crazy cat. Well, people generally understood the Zarkzar saga would be a trilogy, but no. This is a series of space games. I also decided I would release this independently for more work as I wanted other graphic standards for the packaging. Nebula is pretty much ready, but initially it won't be released this year as I don't want to bore Saga enthusiasts, which is so recent with my ideas about space games and less no, asked. No, that was so cheap. What happened? I, I uh, got what? hit killed twice just because of the timing of oh, cause it, when it respawned because it's oh. so slow. The mining ship is so slow. I got killed because the star came on the screen at the exact space that I was at and I didn't know the star was going to appear at that time. I just gotta watch out. Um, I also have another game saved I would like to present it to you before here on the show. So it's got more planned. It's got two more games planned already. Uh, number six, music seems to be play a huge role in your games. Tell us about the decision to dedicate most of the audio to music instead of sound effects. So if you noticed, his games have very little sound effects. It's all music. It's, well, there's a little bit. It is, like the shield. There's a sound yeah. effect for the shield. But you're right. There's... Oh. There's dying sound effect. There's the is taking there, off sound effect. Is there a dying sound effect? Well, you just died in a minute. I so. didn't hear anything, but... Yeah, I'm like... Did it? So the same as the shield, but yeah. Yeah. Um, as I said before, I'm a musician. I have very good memory of walking into arcades in the 80s and hearing all those noises, sounds, and music mixed in the environment. I missed that in the Atari at the time. Obviously, yeah. it was not so possible for numerous reasons um, that we know today. But one of the games for the 2600 that I got to know in the 2000s when I started collecting caught my attention. It was Parker Brother Brothers Gyrus, which was one of the best mus uh, sounds. It actually is amazing music mm -hmm. for uh, one of the classic games. It's so good. And um, Gyrus in general is, is one of my favorite games. Um, uh, pieces of music and video games ever. I mean, that is classical music. It is a rearrangement of that song. Yeah. But so good. And I believe um, that game has five sound chips in it. Five or six, I think it's five sound chips in it to make up that music. Mm -hmm. It's so rich and has so many voices. I think five sound chips of three or four voices each. It's crazy, crazy, crazy. Down and button seems to cause difficulty. Yeah, there's not really any better way to do that. Because to, uh, to It's go just down when you go up and down and then you suddenly shoot. Sometimes if, if your hand's still pushing down, you'll end up yeah. triggering the shield. But Eesh. it's not too bad. It's not no. too bad. The only thing is, is it does pause you. And sometimes when you come out of the shield, it's not timed well. Right. Um, you can die. Kind of like... What you did? <laughs> yeah. Oh, see? It, it's so easy because you think you're at the bottom, but you're still pushing down. But you also start you started to fire at the same time. That was the thing. I find, stop moving, I find interesting fight. is when the big um, ship comes at the top, a yep. lot of a number of the vehicles freeze. Yes, it's very interesting. Oh, no, oh too late. Time. That's okay. I'll just barely make it. Um, the game had beautiful soundtrack using Atari's two audio channels, completely dispensing with effects. It was something I liked. I thought I wanted to put music throughout the saga. Not necessarily in every game I'll make, but I'll, I've done it in Rally Racer and it felt natural. The point is, I wanted to try and make something with both channels, like Gyrus, even if it was simpler. In Rally Racer, I only used one of the channels for the soundtrack, while Flavio did the sound effects in the other channel. I think the results in Star War, uh, Zark Stars, Star Wars, uh, Zark Stars 1 was fun and gave me the arcade feeling I was looking for. I think most new games already have great effects, so my contribution fits in that sense. It actually makes it easier when they pause, right? Or they slow down. You can a go bit, back actually. because it, they don't speed up again until he moves off the screen. Right. So you can actually go back really quickly if you're careful. Yeah. Um, so it like gives this. a bit of a reprieve. Right. So there's right. a reprieve, and I can go back. You get a bit. But of you time. have to do it before he he hits the end of the screen, which right. is kind of cool. Yeah. Um, um. The point is, I wanted to try making something with both channels like Gyrus, even if it was simpler. 
Um, oh, da, 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 da. I was also very happy to receive the award for music and sound. It made me believe more in my nonsensical ideas. <laughs> <laughs> it really works because do you need to hear your shots? Do you need to hear their shots? Does it does it add any feedback to the game that that you need? Mm, not really. You can see it on the screen. Oh, that, was oh. that was so bad. Didn't you, you know, oh, didn't no, you need that fuel. was so bad. You're almost there. They're all flashy, flashy. I think it's the last level uh, before you get to the star. I think you're right. Yeah. There's auto fire. Uh, it's, it's much easier to. It actually is. You, you do, uh, uh, you do okay. kind of need it. You're going to have to get the next one. No, that's fine. That's not hard. You have to hit the rotor, though. Yeah, the rotors all... are moving really fast right now. Ah! Oh, yeah. God. Uh. There you go. Oh, oh no. no! Oh, you still oh, have four okay. lives. Then you get everything back, and you stay at the same level, so that's yeah, good. Which yeah, which is very good. We have tons of fuel now. In this game, you're pretty much concentrated on the rotor. You don't. Yeah. No, it doesn't matter because you have to go back to uh, to get to the higher level. Yeah, you made it. Okay. So what I have to do? You just. Get as close. Ooh, what I do is ooh, I get ooh, as close ooh, as you can. Ooh. You're not very close. Oh, oh. Ah, too close. Too close. Very sensitive. Okay, that's good. And then I. Yeah, that's what I do. Shh. Don't laugh at me. <laughs> Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. <laughs> ah, not fast enough. <laughs> This is so crazy. Oh no! <laughs> Two left. Oh. Oh, three left. Oh no! Oh, too close. One pixel off. One pixel off. Oh, oh. no. Two chips left. Oh, come on. That was so close. Oh, God. This is just... Uh, I feel like I'm so close. One pixel off. Going a little late, I think. Obviously, you're crying. Yay! Uh, <laughs> Level two, and you got an extra life. <sighs> or no. <laughs> These titles are amazing. They're just too dang expensive to get up here in the U.S. I bought a new Marauder way back when. I decided I couldn't justify the shipping it's too bad they look great but a budget's uh but the budget's got to give especially in these crazy times of inflation mm -hmm. the shipping shipping anywhere mm -hmm. right now is crazy because i just had to ship off um all the awards yeah to all over the world yeah like i sent one to europe one to greece south america yeah like everywhere in the world yeah um yeah it's gone up quite a bit oh yeah yeah <laughs> because you know even even a cheap shipping which would be in north america yeah. like in canada and the states it's not too bad if you stay within north america yeah even that's not, that's not cheap anymore no it's not yeah yeah shipping the packaging and everything is top notch it is like yeah. the, everything inside it is so so nice yeah. the cost and shipping is a deal breaker i wish there was a digital purchase option but i only understand why it's not i didn't ask this question but i've asked um brazilians in the past about why they don't give out roms yeah because piracy is a massive problem mm -hmm. in Brazil. Um, probably because just of the cost of things to get there, mm -hmm. just, just like us, shipping in and out of the country, that piracy is a more viable option mm -hmm. because it's just it's just too expensive. Yeah. So giving out the binaries, it would just decimate the sales mm -hmm. within the country. And I'm guessing a lot of their sales are within the country because yeah. of the shipping cost. Yeah. yeah. 
We need plus cart rentals. rentals. <laughs> There's, it's set up. It is actually set up in the plus oh, cart. Oh, really? Mm. Um, it's not enabled, Okay. but it is set up. They have a mm. section for um, renting mm. or purchasing, something like that. Mm. So maybe that's a viable option for Brazilian uh, developers in the future if they ever decide to enable the plus cart store. Mm. Um, money wise. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, we both have done well. Um, should we move on to the third game? Oh, I think so. Leave leave some for other people to play. Yep. Okay. Other levels. Level three we haven't shown yet, so. Well, yeah. No, no. Same. It's all good. Okay. Boom. Oh. Now it is time to move on to Zark Stars 3 Deep Space. I'm going to move back to BB because that's default. Mm -hmm. Change the cartridges out. Okay, go for it. On board of the NIX 26 spaceship, go for it. You have been informed that four motherships are transporting stellar matters from the <gasps> mines of Near Planet. I don't think Ooh, you've played this. I haven't. The planet from the game Zark Stars 2 Ground Force. And we haven't played it on the show in like two years. Okay. And we're the only people who have played it. <laughs> so. Oh, here it okay. is again because it's not out. This cool. is only a work in progress. This is a work in progress. Yeah. Oh wow. Uh, your mission is to intercept the motherships and recover the content. But before you need to browse the four orbits where each mothership is and face the challenges of deep space. Mm. So if I remember correctly, there's a bunch of things you can do in this game, mm. and you move between each of the orbits. Um, so we are in C, computer, computer's off. Okay. Even with the computer off, you can view the four orbits on the sh spaceship's radar. Okay. Press the reset switch to turn on the computer. So it uses a lot Everyone of the switches okay. on the uh, 2600, but okay. you don't have to get up a lot. Um, so, and, and your spaceship will be positioned at the start of the first orbit. Okay. Uh, so just wait. Wait, wait, wait. It should be on BB. Maybe it didn't listen to me. There we go. It wasn't listening to me. Okay. So we're in the first orbit now. And we're on F. Don't press anything. Um, F fire. Manual shoot. Color black and white switches in the color position. So we can go between... Uh, it is an exclusive. It hasn't been updated since last time. So it's the same game. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so... Kind of exclusive? Yeah, it's exclusive, but not updated. Exclusive to us to play. Yeah. yeah. Um, we can put on auto fire or automatic fire. So this is automatic fire. This is manual fire. So we'll leave it on manual. Manual for that's now? that's the default. Yeah. Um, scanner, galaxy scanner. Press the re-switch, reset, plus select switch, both together, um, to go to the galaxy scanner. There's a star in the third orbit. Yep. Crazy mm -hmm. game, eh? Mm -hmm. um, usually there's not many games that use both of those All together. All of them together, yeah, yeah. Um, let's see. The galaxy scanner. Was something found in the radar? Mm -hmm. um, select switch. Each of the orbits have three stages. With the select switch, you choose one of the stages. First orbit, yeah, mm -hmm. it's very fancy. Very fancy. Like, not many games use all those switches yeah. and do all these I mean, kind of crazy stuff. I mean, it's a very stuff. unique attribute of the Atari are those switches, so that's kind of cool. Yeah. Uh, now that you've made the settings on the spaceship's computer, press the joystick button and mm. start the mission. Now, I think, if I remember correctly, it's like crazy manic things coming at you. <laughs> and flying all over the screen. Oh, yeah, your spaceship has like this really cool shadow effect where it's lit on the left hand side mm -hmm. and it's in shadow on the right as if there's a uh, massive light source like a sun on your left hand side of the ship. Mm -hmm. 
and, and it is flickering because some of those ships come down and get on your level, so it just has a constant flicker. Mm. Like the city in number two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, joystick, spaceship, shoot, left movement, right movement. Yep. Uh, all the different things have different scores. Most of them are 150 points. Uh, one of them, the prism, is 75. Uh, the prism has a shield that makes it almost invisible, mm. and that is activated to escape from your shots of your spaceship. However, the prism does not go down what to the base. What is going on? I can't shoot now. Oh, uh, avoid. Am I dead? Am I dead? Am I going to die soon? Just like, avoid. it's flashing. Can you go up or down? No. So just avoid them, I believe. Avoid do everything. I have to do something? Like, nope. get out of I there? I don't think so. Hit the select switch? <laughs> no, I don't think that would... I don't know. It uses all the switches. That. I don't think they would demand you. I'm not move moving. To... I don't even know what I'm supposed to do. Am You're I not moving leave? left and right. Well, no, I, I, I can't avoid. move forward. I can't, I can't shoot. Nothing's happening. You haven't explained to me how to play. Meteors area. Yes. Avoid the meteors. Recharge the spaceship's energy battery and acquire extra points. How oh. do, how do I recharge? Oh, get those things, I guess. The things that's dropping. Yeah. There oh, you go. Jeez. <laughs> that would have been nice to know. <laughs> Should be playing again. It's been a while, two years since we played this. I haven't played that, I don't think. I'm done. I have no energy. Nope. Uh, in this scenario, you have spaceships, weapons, and energy saving modes so you cannot shoot against the meteors. You will hear a warning as you enter the asteroid belt in in indicating the inevitable meteor shower on your spaceship. Again, the, the time reference bar, status bar, shows the duration of the crossing of the zone within the stage. One minute. An invulnerable robot probe was sent to the asteroid field to help you recharge the spaceship's batteries. Each eight recharge supplements launched by the probe and captured by your ship are equivalent to one energy battery restored. But be careful with the eight? meteors. Yeah, so you have to get eight of them. Oh, they call Careful uh, with the meteors. They cause you some damage to that... Uh, that the same damage that the enemies do. P.S. Don't worry if you're hit by a meteor. The recharge count from 1 to 8 does not reset. Oh. Leo Santi says get those. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we weren't looking A little over. too late, unfortunately, yeah. but that's okay. That's okay. Oh, see, because you have uh, six energy things there? Yeah, but I have no bar. My bar is almost down to nothing. I think that's it just was time. white. It was white before. Oh, maybe it is time. It's just time. So it's just to, you need eight to refill an energy. Gotcha. Right. Okay, that makes sense. Well, that makes sense. Okay. I was worried that bar was energy, and I'm like, I, I can't make it go up. Like, what's going on? But I guess it's just the different stages. Ah, terrible. Terrible. It's time to catch. Things again. One. Three. Four. Not worth dying for. <laughs> Not worth dying for. Five. Six. Seven. Eight. Yay! Can I get one? I didn't notice. I didn't. I wasn't looking in that area. I was looking at you. Cool. Very cool stage. And the meteors are really nice looking. So we have five energies. Time's almost up. Oh, it's very... oh, you got six. Okay, you did. You did. You, so you gained two in this uh, Good. spot. Ah <laughs> oh my god. They're big. Chunky spaceships. Ah. Whoa, that was close. Get it. Oh my god. Yay. So there is a third stage, which is the mothership. Uh, you have to hit the mothership 50 times when you get to it. 50? Yeah. Jeebus, that's going to take a long time. The mothership is unbelievably impressive looking. Yeah? Like it's, the graphics on it are so good. Oh, let's try to get to the mothership. music so much <laughs> so <laughs> frantic <laughs> i love it it's crazy so now we understand the background oh. where all this music comes yeah from. he was an extremely successful musician <laughs> oh no i'm 
extremely unsuccessful <laughs> video game. Oh, oh no. two left. <laughs> Gotta make it to the Oh left. no! <laughs> Stop it! Oh gosh. What the hell? It you got me right died away. Died like four or five right times away. in a row. You don't move that fast. Like, like you really don't. Things are moving so fast now. Oh. It's quite a bit more challenging. Like, look at my my speed. There's no, there's no, like, fast gotta movement. Give your, gotta give yourself a... Oh, it's hard to get in between it, them. It, yeah. I remember playing last time and, and getting in between them a couple times. It's very hard. Because they're moving diagonally. Gosh, so you have to move with them. Ah, yeah, it's true. Oh, down to two. Oh, no. Yay, it's not flashing anymore. Um, it doesn't say how you get to the mothership. How many, how many rounds you have to do? Probably quite a few. Oh, I lifted off. Oh. Mothership! Look at that. Look how huge it is! Look how big that enemy is! So shoot the... Ah! Good bad. Shot. Good shot. You have to shoot these things. Yes. Oh, he's... <laughs> <laughs> One life left. Oh, no, that's not good. <laughs> oh, you shot the missile. I didn't know you could do that, but still. It's hard to do, and it's best to get out of the way. Oh, oh no! Look how awesome that mothership is. Look at that little thing going back and forth. No, I can't. I can't restart. Brain. Oh no! It's like his other games. When you get to the boss and you die, you're dead. Let's see if there is a restart. Dead. It has to continue. Oh no! Continue on the mothership. Stage. Yes, it's like the other one. <laughs> I think it's your turn to keep try. the joystick pressed during the game button. The mothership oh, stage so. really pushing the taa graphics yeah. uh yeah it's got a, a rotating play field which is moving across the screen we're actually mm -hmm. moving outward from mm -hmm. the center a uh, couple of um player graphics there mm. um doubled up wide um or tripled without the middle one yeah it's really really nice a little bit of phoenix yes yeah okay my turn we're gonna go for that one. Three with the star. Yeah. Okay. It's hard though. Is it? Yeah, because it's in stage three. So. Mm -hmm. Well, you've played it before, so. Um. Where did you leave off? Right there, number seven. Number seven. Yep. Okay. Okay, do you plan to have high score competitions or patch scores for the Bark Star series Thanks like you this. did for Rally Racing? Yes, I had already done this with a new Marauder in 2015, and three players managed to get 99,990 points. Jeez. Uh, which was a lot of fun. I'm thinking of giving a nice prize to whoever can finish Zark Stars 1 without using continue. Bye. Good <laughs> luck. Oh my god, without Good luck. continue. I'm still not sure how it's going to be, but I believe I'll start it soon. I know the game is not easy, dot. My <laughs> wife said that angled shots on the screen are terrible things for oh. most gamers. Oh, Agreed. they're so hard. Um, but that was the intention. I have a challenging first game mm. and follow up with new, less aggressive games. However, I've seen the advancement of people who are insi insisting on playing and trying to go further in the game. Yeah, it's always perseverance that gets you to the end, right? Yeah. Um, and Zark Stars 2 is much easier, and Star Stars 3 is, is is not too bad. It's it's harder than 2. Yeah, 2 is two is more achievable. Yeah. 3 seems achievable, 1 yeah. seems virtually impossible. <laughs> um, <laughs> once you learn the mechanics of Zark Stars 1, it becomes smooth, and you can dodge all the ships and shots, and the game becomes more fun and yet challenging. It's more of an arcade and less of a home game feature. Uh, you really need to spend some time on it. However, the complete game until the end is no more than 30 minutes. And the same happens in the other games in the saga. They all have an ending and don't go past 20 or 30 minutes in full. So once you get good enough, you can complete it relatively fast. Oh no! Much death, much death. 
Hi, D-Train. I hope you enjoyed your study session. I saw your name at the beginning of, yes. of the uh, sure. chat, so you, you were obviously there in the background. Um, no patches need to be made then. <laughs> yeah, no patches. <laughs> Very even, true. It doesn't even need to be We're on Zark Stars 3, uh, D-Train. We're just uh, on the th number three in the trilogy. Okay. Tell us a little bit about how you program your games and the tools you use. Do you program your games with Atari Basic or Assembly? I'm pretty much new to programming yet, and the theoretical part and even about the basic concepts of programming I know almost nothing. I come from the arts, I worked in an advertising agency in the 90s, and with music since forever. I'm also a designer and I like this more creative part. Ah. I learned to program what little I know from 2018 onwards and I only use Atari. When you are not from this area, it is very difficult to understand certain texts and technical notes, even when they are very well detailed and exemplified. I did it! Do you have to catch that? Do you have to catch all the stars? All of them? Oh. Oh. Does this give you energy? So... They, like, turn away from you. <laughs> they do. And... Oh. I beat it, but I'm gonna die. What? Can what you happened? flip back? I guess not. Oh, uh, when you only have one energy bar left, your shots and movement are so chunky. Are they? Chunky. They're so slow. No. <laughs> so I went down to one in the mothership and my shots were going so slow. But I beat the mothership. And I got some stars. But it, it didn't seem to do anything special. I'm in the area where... It showed the star. Maybe that's where you get the stars. Is when you're in that area and you defeat the mothership. So, he says, I tried to read some things and didn't understand anything. <laughs> Even more if it is in a language in which you are not fluent, in this case English for me. Oh, it's like explaining yeah. to a person who doesn't know how a song is composed how an entire symphony is made. <laughs> so I started using creativity and a little art to overcome the lack of knowledge and technique in programming. Of course, it is necessary to use logical and mathematical reasoning, but this is also found in music, which is very true. Oh, the good uh, thing is that the, um, mm -hmm. oh, it's the meteors are slow. slow. I think I wrapped around and went to an easy level. I think you did. I think you started over. Can you flip to another level? I don't know if you complete? can flip mid-game to check out where you are. Um, I'll get. just finish this yep. and then I'll have a look. Um, yeah. Therefore, considering myself still a layman on the subject, and maybe I will always be a layman, I'm very grateful to Hater, who helped me, and to the Batari team that delivered such a powerful tool into our hands from my point of view. I remember reading about 10 years ago a topic on Atari Age where someone or some people were starting to get annoyed with a possible with possible bad quality that games made in Batari would have and cause over time. Well, because people um, were making games... There was something... There was a demo oh. that you would base things off of called Tinker Nut. Oh, okay. And it was a really simple, like, shooter. Okay. This thing would come down and just automatically track you. Mm. And you'd shoot it, and it would just rack up the score gotcha. based on how many times you shot it. And so many people would just change the graphics oh. and release their game and call it blah. Yeah. And everybody's like, oh my god, it's Tinker Nut again. <laughs> yeah. And yet today, see how many cool games we have. How many programmers collaborating for a new scenario for these classic consoles, and even how many games available for you to keep the Zero Page Homebrew channel running weekly for so long, in addition to the prize and the community integration. I am very grateful to these people who spent their time building Batari. Well, and I mean, this is the thing. People people start with the basics and learn yeah. that way, right? So. Luckily, I haven't seen yeah. Tinker Nut in years. In years? That's good. Nobody's made a Tinker Nut in a while. <laughs> it, like, when I first was really getting into it, like, five years ago, onto the Atari Age forums, and I was looking at stuff, and it's like, oh my god, it's a lot of Tinker Nuts. Mm -hmm. But in time, I started using Hackomatic 2, which is a really fun tool. That's where you, being a layman, can understand some possibilities. So I'm also grateful to the HOM team. Hackomatic. Oh, I don't know what Hackomatic is. No, I don't know. Yeah, I haven't heard that yet before. We never talked about it. Um, ah. And then there's one more question. Do you want me to go over it, or do you want me to see if you can figure out... Like, can you switch back? Uh, yeah, if you could read through the instructions. Um... Uh, Last life. I just gained a life now. Back down. Don't go 
lock. Thank you. Oh, yeah, I'm at the beginning of three, so I wrapped around three. But it's not showing where... Tittens. Oh, so you can go back? Yeah, you want to switch to Or did you reset? Oh, you reset at the game. I reset it. I have no, no score anymore. Music is music talent is very synergistic with programming. Mm. I'm amazed at Batari's capabilities and, and the games pe people can make with it. I've seen actually most games are made with Batari Basic. There's very few um, assembly programmers. Mm -hmm. So if you, most of the games you see on this show are made with Batari, Batari Basic. Batari Basic. Yeah. Mm. That sounds so like I a pretty play this. powerful Level? tool if it's accessible to people. Uh, it's yeah, not it is. Okay. It looks the same though. Maybe it's a little just faster. A little faster. I mean, I beat number three. Mm -hmm. right? So, on the hardest one. Mm. So I'm guessing this is just marginally harder. Okay. I do enjoy this um, this game a lot. Oh, the shooting and the complexity this, of it is nice too. I think this is my too. favorite out of all three. Yeah. Because there's a there's three different stages in it. I like two. Fun. I like two. I like I like the different screens. I like the burnt out space station when you die um all of it's really and you do have to go the and get star fuel. getting that star getting the fuel like that's a yeah. really fun twist on the normal shooter like shoot the bad guys kind of game yeah it's really nice um okay number nine you've won for best packaging in the atari homebrew awards for both your games rally racers and zark stars won and you can tell there's a lot of work that goes into your game releases and packaging tell us a little bit about how the packaging manuals and cartridges are put together this part is always a little painful in any production when you're doing things pretty much on your own as it involves taking a break from the development for a while and totally getting back into it. So I was very happy to receive the award once again. I do practically everything by myself from assembling the cartridges to stamping the boxes. I did the sketches for the drawings uh, for, from my friend Kenny Schmidt's illustrations, the graphic arts, the manual, and all the other pieces. It's been months pouring over it. Yeah. <laughs> I also had help from Leonardo Santiago, mm. a new friend I met during the pandemic when he appeared with Unholy mm. uh, in the manufacturing of PCBs, and if it weren't for him, I might have abandoned all this madness, because from that part, I really, really ran away. <laughs> anyway, I had to place and solder the components on the board one by one. Write the EEPROMs. This takes quite a bit of time, and I think I listened to a few records over and over again during the process. <laughs> D D DOs or DIOs? The last line was one of them. I don't know. What that is. I don't know DO? DIO? I don't know. Yeah. I'll have to look it up. Um, uh, I also have the help of a great friend, Lucas Jespiak, who takes care of the videos and sending the games to people. My wife, Viviane Pasiavis? Pasiavis? I'm going to say that wrong. Uh, <laughs> helps me with parts of the text, some corrections in the design of the boxes and manuals, helps with some concepts that can always be improved. She is a great partner and a great player. Yeah. Uh, in Atari, she is very fond of Flash Gordon Wait. and Pressure Cooker. Dio the band? I assume the band. What oh, was, Dio was the that? Band. Oh, I that flashed up to too fast. It's in the history. Show them there. Uh, Somebody followed. Who followed? It's in the middle in the history. It's a list of names. It says follow, follow, subscribe, subscribe. I don't see it. Middle of the screen. Yeah. There's a big list. The Twitch activity feed. Yeah. It says follow, 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 subscribe, subscribe. Okay, somebody subscribed. Somebody followed. Oh, John Pool Twenty Four. It's at the top. I was Make like, what? what is that? They followed. They followed. Yes. There we go. Thank you, John. Thank you for following. That's really nice. Thank you. <laughs> I know, it's tiny. Place. It flashes up a little too fast sometimes. Um, where was I? Dio, yes. Dio the band? Gotta Dio be the, the same one. Okay. Yeah. Uh, in Atari, she is very fond of Flash Gordon and Pressure Cooker. Plays both well. Here in Portugal, where we've been living since 2017, she bought a Nintendo Switch and practically finished Zelda, which I can't even come close to because for me it's still very difficult to have any joystick that has more than one button. 
childhood remnants. I just look at these cases. Uh, thanks, uh, thanks for the questions, James, and keep having fun with Atari. I will. Ah, uh, how far did you get in Zelda? Me? I'm pretty close to the end. Yeah. I just, when it comes to RPGs, I really hesitate on completing main quests. Oh, come on. Like I think I could. Oh, now I'm going. Slow. I've, no. I've one of like one of those bosses left. I forget what they're called now. I haven't played it in a while. Um, oh, I forget what they call them, but they're like the mechanical animals that you have to defeat. Ronnie I have James one Dio. left, and then I have the last like the last part of the main quest to do. Oh, okay. But I like to do as much as possible. I like to craft and make food. And I, I don't like going through the final <laughs> quest because it often it'll it'll shut down the smaller side quests. And I I don't try to do everything, but I do like pursuing as many side quests as I can before mm. I do the final quest. Just in case it shuts it down, you can't do anything after. So so I, I, I almost I'm almost right at the end, but I refuse to go too far. If that makes sense, so I really should finish it. Yeah, just to just to say you finished I it. I, I, I know I should, but um, Horizon Zero Dawn I think has a sequel. Coming out. And I don't. Or is it out? I don't think we. No, it's coming out. Is it coming out? We don't have the console for that. We'll. I think get it's it on an PC. Xbox. I think it's an Xbox we'll get it console. On PC. I don't know. We might have to buy a console for that because no, I love no, that game. We'll that game is PC. amazing, amazing. PC, we'll get it. On Can PC. you get it on PC? Yes. Are you sure it's not an exclusive? I'm I guess it's sure. Microsoft, but PC. anyway, I digress. I digress. It's like That's a rainbow in the dark. <laughs> New Horizon is out now. Oh. It has been for two weeks. I thought it was pretty close. Is it on PC or just? I on... thought it was like Xbox. If it's on Xbox, it's probably on PC. Um, we don't have Xbox or PS Five. Yeah. We have a done. PS4. Done with it. Done with all that. I know you keep saying that, but we don't have a PC to play these games on, so. No, because video cards are too expensive. <laughs> anyway, I digress. Yep. I do want to play New Horizon. Uh, yeah, it looks really good. It's such a good game. The original was amazing. Yeah. Absolutely amazing. Some video cards are like too. Oh, PS4. There is a PS4 version. It might even be cheaper than the yeah. PS5, yeah. so. Yeah. Might have to have to probably be boot up the good PS4. Enough. I think so. I yeah. think so. Probably doesn't justify buying a PS5. No, no. Put that money into a PC, into the video card. But <laughs> into a the good, video card. A no good video card is like yeah. two thousand dollars, unfortunately. Yeah, about the same price. Yeah. Yeah. I am looking forward to it. Um, lots of fun games. Yes. Today it was uh, fun going through all three at once. Can really get a. I love I love themes. I mm -hmm. love just when you have <laughs> you have a theme to go with, and there's a, there's you know a trilogy of games to play all at once. Mm -hmm. It's the same with movies. We love doing movie nights. We love movie, having marathon, a director and yeah. doing a marathon of all of a director's films, and you get to see the little things that carry over from one to the other. But this was fun. They were all three great fun games. Yep. So the first one is very hard. There's some similarities between them where it's yeah. like an. Oh, a relentless onslaught of bullets and I would enemies. almost say two, three, one for increasing difficulty. Oh, 100%, yeah. Two, three, one. Yeah. Yeah. If you want to start a little easier. And two is like for beginners. Two is not three bad. Three is for a medium. Three like, is not easy, but, but then one is just really... One yeah. is death. One is death. Just it's <laughs> continuous, continuous. Experts. Like, one is for experts. Select, game select, game select, game select, yeah. Buy some more homebrews instead. Yeah. yeah, I know, Charles. <laughs> oh, we, I do as well. I like the homebrews. I like the I like the modern games too if they're good. If yep. they're you know, there are some good ones. I, there are some I, good ones. I mostly get retro looking new games. Well, you like more for PS4. You like more and games Switch. that feel a little bit more indie and like platformers. Casual. Casual games. Well, some of them well are casual. platformers, but yep. you're not platformers, into platformers shooters very light rpgs yeah i was gonna say you don't go for the big rpgs like Sometimes. i do i mean you like skyrim yeah i played a lot of skyrim but i mean that was a long time ago yeah i want to see elden ring because that sounds really good elder mm. elder ring elden ring elder ring probably elder elden know. elden ring whatever the new one is looks yeah. really good too but i mean that's a totally different style of game than a lot of homebrews which are like arcade games and they're they're different right they're yeah very different so you can you can play them all. Yep. You just yep. have to have a you know money. <laughs> but yeah. 
lots of and inflation of and and shipping being what it is 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 a problem right now but that's okay yeah anyway so thank you leandro camera for making these games and allowing us to oh, so do the good. world debut of yeah. zark stars 2 yeah and it was fun revisiting zark stars 3 and 1 again yeah uh what's coming up uh, next episode, we're going to be playing some brand new games. Uh, Game of the Bear. <gasps> Too much to bear. On Friday with Darcy. <laughs> I want to <laughs> play Game of the Bear. I could switch around the 7800 day. <laughs> I want Game of the Bear. I want to try it. I'll uh, try it some one of these days. Yeah, we'll probably play both back-to-back -back Game of the Bear mm. on a... Um, oh, yeah, that'd be a good one. After Dark? Yeah. 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 We do have to do the... the um, um contest yes yeah yeah the high score contest so we'll play playing those as well i have to do that on a, uh i'll be yep. playing dragon's havoc mm. maybe i'll try and get um the full version mm -hmm. um from revan mm. um see how where he is with that but there's been a lot of updates for that shooter it's very fun cool uh we have a uh, final binary of adventures of ollie troll kind of an exclusive because there is no binary posted it's only mm -hmm. on cartridge that's kind of cool and the final version of robots rumble mm -hmm. uh then on the 25th that's a friday next friday uh we have the exclusive final binary of space pac-man which is mm -hmm. very very fun game uh we'll look at the updated version of 1942 most likely um, and then on April 1st, it's not April Fools. We are going to be playing these games. It's a uh, Atari 8-bit day. We're going to be playing a bunch of converted games that are on many platforms. And this is the Atari 8-bit versions of them. Nice. What happened to the interview? Yeah. Well, we well so what I out. was going to say <laughs> is, Dan, you were paying attention because uh, we did get through all the interview questions, all nine. Yeah. Um, but the interview from the magazine, we oh. didn't even get to that at all. There's um, not enough time. There's it. not really enough time. And it's, it's online anyway. Yeah. Like, you can go read it yourself. It's... <laughs> Uh, Yogos 80 game magazine uh, number 26 in the December 2021 Christmas go. edition. Nice. And uh, they're talking specifically about Zark Stars 1. Very nice. Um, so it's it's fairly short. It's a quick read. Yeah. So how many NDAs do you have to sign? Uh, <laughs> all these excuses. All the NDAs. Yeah. Um, I've, I've built up enough trust. I don't need to sign anything. Um, I think I've only signed one NDA really yeah. in all the time that you've all been showing off people's games because i mean i've done dozens and dozens and dozens and dozens of exclusives yeah. and i haven't revealed any of them so it, i think they're pretty cool with me yeah doing it. um where, what am i looking at archive streams no uh then on uh april 8th we have the exclusive world premiere uh razor's edge by the same developer as Keijo Chases the Cheese, mm -hmm. Leonardo Santiago. Um, then we also have Atari Age Day. Mm -hmm. Looking more like April, maybe late March, probably, probably early April, if anything. Uh, then Dark Keep, another exclusive world premiere of the board game converted to a video game. The screenshots are looking absolutely stunning. Uh, we are also going to be doing a Champ Games secret homebrew reveal mm. in May. Very exciting. There's a couple more games that aren't even on this list. I've been talking with a couple developers. Nice. So people have been developing. And oh, it's big time now. Excellent. Around December, it just, just crashes. We and noticed early that. And, and January, just nothing yeah. happens. It's a quiet time. And then in this, this everyone everyone's um, incubating it's, their ideas. And I think it goes off. spring fever and everyone kind of... Uh, yeah. Because we take time off Starts. after the uh, Atari Awards. And it's good people aren't developing during the Atari Awards ramp yeah. up time because I'm super busy. But I think as well, people are generally busy around the holidays. Yes. So it's like you're not probably working on the side projects. Mm. You're work you're dealing with, you know, family and stuff like that over yeah. December. And then you're just exhausted or in January. They're starting them so. up. And then we start getting wind of them in, <laughs> in well, March, April. I think you get tired, and then in January you have a bit of a lull, and maybe you start up on some of these projects again yeah. in January. I, that's my that's my. Um, did you time the awards because of that? Good question. Um, no, I timed the awards because of the cutoff of the end of the year. Yes, and that's what I do: January first to December thirty first. Yeah, 
it's just easier that way for people to keep track of it and me yeah. too um so it's just how long does it take to organize and do the voting and do all the narrowing down with the nomination committee mm -hmm. and it takes the whole thing a about weeks, a month right? and a half yeah for yeah the whole thing because the you know three weeks for the nomination committee yeah uh another week in between a week before that so that i can organize all the games and then about two weeks for the public can do to vote mm -hmm. so it adds up to about a month and a half and mm -hmm. then we do the awards secret champ games puzzles <laughs> to unlock the game should be released at a game of their mm -hmm. own they are that big that uh yeah yeah. they're not they're not super fun puzzles because they give you no hints <laughs> they're just like here's a combination well, to it my was luggage. just the Figure one it year out. it was just the one year we were like Brutal. john we need to play this game more hints or just give us the number <laughs> it's just we need to get started <laughs> but they're like elaborate and really well done like they have oh, graphics he and loves they're spinning it. stuff yeah yeah he yeah loves one two three stuff. four five <laughs> yeah you'll have to do that on the next one make yeah. it super easy yeah uh, John. <laughs> um, yeah, so lots coming up. Uh, Atari 2645 birthday marathon. Yeah. In September. Yeah. Be playing all the games ever made for the Atari. Asterisk. Um, uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> in After Dark. Mm -hmm. yeah, probably August, September. Still have to add those up. It's about 400. So if we at, uh, say, four minutes, uh, a cartridge times 400 that's 1600 minutes mm. does that add up to let's get a calculator on the screen is that too big it's probably too big oh my god let's get this smaller there we go let's just do the calculations again so 400 games times four minutes each. bigger metal lunar seven <laughs> says <laughs> make bigger. it bigger <laughs> that's how many hours Ooh. it's a whole day and if we do it what? at that's a that's ooh. three hours a day probably yeah eight eight sessions nine Shh. Is more? water oh so nine it'd be about about nine about nine days after darks so if we do, uh, if we did one a week, one a week, we that's could, two months two and, months. A, that's and a, an extra. Yeah. yeah. And we can end it on the anniversary of the release, which is September 11th. Okay. So if we do that, that we're doing it all summer, basically is what you're saying. <laughs> the end of all, end of summer. What yeah. about the end of summer? Because the end of summer, we do have plans. So we're yeah, going to yeah, do it remotely. It, can no, we do it remotely? No, we'll work around it. Can we do a satellite via satellite? Or we'll do an hour and a half twice a week or something. <laughs> I have to skip one. Yeah, without yeah. doing anything remotely. That would be hilarious. I'd have to bring my computer. This needs a lot of processing power That's to true. to encode in you real can't time. Just, you can't just you can't just you can't just use a cell phone then. You could. It would be terrible. <laughs> They'd not be able to see us. They'd just see our cell phone playing it. <laughs> That'd be funny. Whoever's watching the cats do the episode. Yeah, yeah. Good luck to them figuring all this yeah. out. Yeah. And setting it yeah, all you up. You just set it all up and say, okay, you just press this button. Yeah, and it just goes. It's just doo, one. Doo, 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 doo. It's, just, it's just one button. <laughs> just one button. Myst Mystique games are designed for after. Yeah. You know? um, yeah. So, thank you. For Ding. tuning in. <laughs> Ding. Oh, not quite. Where is it? I bet the cat could get fed again. What? Uh, oh, does anyone want to feed the cat before we go? One last feeding. Hmm? Want to fatten up this kitty? Well, we read out the names. Yes, we'll read out the names. Oh, great show, Dan. Thank Mike you. Mike says good show. Yeah, it was a lot of fun doing those again. Um, so, thank you for tuning in. Mike Soul, Dan, ABC, RC7E, the D-Train. Oh, yum, yum, yeah. yum, yum. it's street time. You see him get up, go crazy. Yum, 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 yum. Yum, 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 yum. Okay, you can flip on the kitten can while you read out the pages. Here. Uh, Charles Whelan, Metal Lunar 7. Uh, Ivory Tower Collections. Uh, I said Mike Sol, Leo C. Santi. Ding. Um, Ground Trooper Old Style, the games are... Rendered Ghost, Rod Castler, Vitoko, Nostalgic, 
<laughs> uh, this is a good time to actually do it because I can read this out and keep the kit not cam on. Although he grabbed his one. food and ran away. With Carl G. <laughs> Sitaniki. Uh, tile style. Lots of people today. Yeah, chatting. it's awesome. Victor M. Uh, oh, he's going crazy. Atari 2600, <laughs> dude. Phaser Cat Games. Oh, it's your rapper. Miss Command. Oh, my God. Andreas Ca Capelli. Capello. Capella O. Capella O. Uh, Dr. Moo Cows. Wow, that was a lot of different yes. people chatting. Yes. And some names there that probably didn't notice because I was playing, but that uh, ding was to complete Tanya's rendition of the theme song. But treats, treats are, are good too. too. Ding! Yes, I saw. It. Yeah, I got, I got that. So, Atari thanks RC7E. You like bouncing it off the floor so he goes crazy. Yeah. Are you gonna hit it? <laughs> you no, gotta, it has to ding. No, you have to ding it. There good it go. kitty. I know the ding is a bit off of the video. I have to is time it? that up. Yeah, it's slight, like a quarter second off. Get good stuff. So next episode. He runs away with it sometimes. Like, no, you can't have it. It's mine. <laughs> still have to schedule one more game for next episode. So I'll have to figure that out. But why is that off? But your voices aren't. Um, because there are three or four video feeds going in. Yeah to the computer one is this camera um <laughs> one is the cat cam mm -hmm. uh no three video feeds uh one is the video game what? and they all have a different lag time because of the capture cards oh he ran away but so i have to delay the the faster ones to time up with the slower one. Oh, i see and I have to delay the other ones a bit more because I think the webcam is the fastest is one or something like that. But I have to time them all up so along with the audio that I have to time up. Uh, <gasps> luckily, the audio on the video game and the video on the video game are the same, but I still have to delay them. But and this one I have to um, delay as well. Yeah. The audio from here. Wow. So you have to adjust them all. Are you wearing Grand Prix socks? I am wearing uh, Speedway socks. Freed freeway. 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 Sorry. Freeway. Yeah. You want to show those? Freeway. freeway. There we freeway. go. Freeway sock. Yeah. So, yeah, you have to do a lot of uh, timing, let's say. And uh, luckily there was... Um, freeway! Uh, some, there's some things I can do to time it up, like I can clap and then mm. figure it all out. They're, they're all my socks. Yes, they are. They are. <laughs> he has a whole set but of I usually, Atari socks. So I like, you know, I like wearing Activision them. socks specifically. Activision, yeah, yeah. Um, but usually I wear them when I run out of these generic black socks. <laughs> <laughs> I just think they're cute. Yeah, they, they fit my feet, cute. so, yep. Okay, we're done. Ooh. Yay. So thanks for tuning in. Um, very fun games. We will be back on Friday with Darcy. Yes. But if Darcy can't make it, then you get to play Game of the Bear 2. Yes, two hopefully three. he'll make it, though. Yeah. All right. So have a good night, everyone, yes. and have a good week. And we'll see you on Friday for more ZPH. Yes. Home for goodness. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. Yeah, thank have you. Bye-bye.